Welcome to episode five of the Confusianity Podcast. Today is our first Christian guest, Brian, a good friend of mine from high school days in Germany. The interesting twist on our friendship is that back in high school, he was not religious at all, whereas I, of course, was quite steeped in Christianity. But for the past 12 years or so, he's the Christian and I am the apostate. Over the years, we've had countless deep conversations about faith, politics, life, everything really, and I'm glad to share some of our personal discussions with you now. Today, you'll get to hear his story of how he became a believer, juxtaposed with my story of leaving the faith. Let's jump right into the conversation, as Brian was telling me about Christian singer Lauren Daigle and some of the controversy in Christian circles about her not being Christian enough, I guess you could say. Like last night, somebody dropped like what I thought was a bombshell on me. Like I went to this like kind of like a Christian karaoke type thing last night because I wanted to I wanted to try to sing this song, right? <laughs> I, I butchered. Wait, I, what's Christian karaoke? Like regular songs? No, there, it's it's like uh, contemporary Christian music that you like, you know, that you hear on the radio and stuff like that. And you know, <laughs> I mean, there's because I listen to Christian radio, so. But uh, okay. At the same time, like I was like, oh uh, well, you know. I want to sing this song because in the car, man, I jam out, right? <laughs> and it's way different when you're when you're sitting where you're standing there and you have a microphone and there's people around. And you're like, oh man, I gotta sing now. This is weird. And so Wait, you've never you've got karaoke. I before. have, but I mean, it was like probably like uh, before I was like going to church and 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 that sort of thing. So it was like you know I had some liquid courage back then, and now and, right. and now it's like yeah, I. Yeah. I would really, in general, not like the karaoke without alcohol being involved. Right, and so since yeah. since I don't, you know, uh, and obviously would that yeah, and you, would that be frowned upon if you were a little at, drunk at the at church? Heck yeah! <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> it would be terrible. Hey, They're like Brian's drunk, dude, man. What's going on here? Jesus, Jesus turned water to uh-huh. wine. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus is pro alcohol. Uh-huh. <laughs> Let's not get into that. Jeez. I've, I've, uh, I've got you uh-huh. there. Oh, you got me, man. I got to throw all my religion out the window now. Or I could just start drinking, right? Just as long as I don't get drunk. Yeah. <laughs> right. No. Just enough to get a nice buzz going for karaoke. Yeah. But but no, so so I waited. Like I First, I had to go late because my, my wife didn't get back till late. And, and uh, I didn't want to bring the kids because, you know wrangling kids while you're trying to do something else is kind of hard but at the same time like so I waited until the very end and, and then I got up there and I tried to sing the song and I was like man I'm terrible you know what I mean this is this is bad and you know it's my first time I was super nervous and, and all that other stuff and, and plus like there were some people setting up for a wedding and, and so I had like a bigger audience than I was expecting and I'm like oh I don't know about this but but anyway so so this girl there she dropped this bomb on me and she's just like, oh, yeah, this one Christian artist, you know, there's all this talk that she's not Christian anymore. And I was like, what? Get out of here. And, you know, hmm. it, it it all stems from uh, the fact that she had gone on the Ellen show and she was singing, you know, her, her music. And her music is very, very oh. spiritual. You know, it, it it talks about God. It doesn't name God. Right. But at the same time, if you're. Wait, who is the artist? Uh, Lauren Daigle. <laughs> And so the the whole big thing here is ever since she had gone on the show, I mean, it might it might have happened before before the show, like people were doubting like her Christianity and all this other stuff. But because she had gone on the show, it just amplified it. And there's all these people that are like saying, well, you know, she's she's not about Jesus. She's she's all about, you know, building herself up, her career up so that she can go into the secular world and make a bunch of money. And wait, wait, wait. So Christians are saying that she was never a Christian all along, but she was just using it to 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 to, el- to boost her yeah, career, to elevate herself. And and yeah. and so you know, but if you listen to her music, it's all it's all you know, it all points to God. Um, and but they're they're like going through her website. They're like, not one, not in one place in her her website does it say the name. Does she mentioned Jesus. Yeah. And, you know, if you go to her website, it's all about merchandise and, you know, she's trying to sell all this stuff and huh. they had gone to her, you know, like, uh, like. So basically, if there is a hell, she's going to be the first in line. Oh, I. Is, is that's how Chris, that's how Christians are thinking. Well, about. I mean, to me, I was like, why are they condemning her so bad? You know, like I listen to her music and, and to me, it glorifies God. So I'm like, I don't I don't see it, you know, and then, 
you know, they're going through this thing that she doesn't mention Jesus, and they go through her ticket prices at Carnegie Hall, and like, you know, there's some tickets that are nine thousand bucks front row, and all this other stuff. And Jesus, yeah, and I, what? The? Yeah, I was like, I was like, wow, that that is kind of like, it sounds like a money grab to me, right? And so I was telling my wife about it this morning because you know when I got home she was sleeping, but and and she's like, I tried to tell you about this, you know, a couple months ago, and I was and I, and I was like, yeah, I mean, I heard. I heard that there was some Christian backlash, but that's to be expected, right? Um, when you go on a show where the host is uh, homosexual, and right. and so, but you know, I, I I looked at it and you know what she said about it. She goes, you know, I I want to be able to show show love to people, and you know, my whole thing is is you know the homosexual commu- community, you know, in, in the Bible and and Christians are all like, well, you know, it's a sin. I'm like, but there's so many other sins out there that everybody does so you can't condemn one person because of their homosexuality and then not right. not condemn the guy who beats his wife you know what i'm saying like right that's a good yeah, point it, so it, it it's to me it's like okay you know what we're, we're told to go out into the world and, and to preach the gospel and, and and to do these things that's the great the great commission right and so i'm like okay well maybe she's doing that maybe she, that's why she's going on these places and 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 trying to to talk to these people about god and, and you know and, and so my whole thing is like okay it it it's kind of it's kind of a stretch right but then they're going and they're pulling bible verses and saying you know the 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 world will fool you and and they're saying like uh you know, when when you uh, cater to the world, you you're not you're not doing anything for the kingdom. All this other stuff, right? And I'm like, yeah, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be renewed by the transforming of your mind. Yes, that whole yes, thing. that whole thing. Yeah. And so I, I'm like, and, and I agree with that, you know. And I'm I'm like, okay, well, but at the same time, you know, how are we supposed to go out into the world and preach the gospel if you know? And, and their whole thing is like, she's. She's trying to become a, a a sheep in wolf's clothing, and and you know, and that's not the way to do it. And but but wait wait wait, she she came out and said she's actually not a Christian anymore, right? No, there there was like an interview where they were asking her, "Do you prefer to be called a Christian artist or or an artist or you know?" I've I've heard you being called both, and and she was like, you know. It's it's kind of like you know people slap a label on you and and they tell you this and they tell you that and she goes but it, it, I'm an artist you know and and it, it's about the art and 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 whatever and, and and so everyone's getting you know all heated and, and there's so much backlash about it and I'm like wait 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 so that that was the big coming out that was the big statement some, that had that said everything in a ro- an uproar yeah and I'm like y'all are taking it out of context man I mean you're taking it to a level that it's right, it's not right. you know like if you still listen to so her, she might actually still be a Christian she is a Christian like my wife showed me interviews oh. with her later on you know and you know wow but there was also the, the this guy who was like well he was listening to one interview and you know, he kept on saying, oh, yeah, she's going to bring up Jesus anytime now. And, and he just kept on. It was kind of like a, 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 a farce, <laughs> right? Like he would he would go to the clip and he would say, oh, well, she didn't say it there. But oh, oh, this part, she's going to say it here, you know, and then and then she never did. You know, like, who are your biggest influences? She's talking like Aretha Franklin. Like and he's, he's like, yeah, you need to talk about the hymns. You need to talk about God. You, and, and she never does. And so I can. Right. S- and he's all upset. Yeah, but but her. I can see their their point to uh, to an extent. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can see it, but at the same time, because she's supposed to be like an ambassador of Christ and all that, right? Kind of and and so the whole thing was like she they're they're saying that she's Bible illiterate and all this other stuff, and I'm I'm like, man, you are just condemning and you're hurting the opportunity for her right. to to spread the gospel because you got and they're right. like, you just watch her next album, it won't be anything about God, and and, and they may they may be right, you know, I don't know, right. Right. you know. But at the same time, I'm I'm like, you know, why don't we just wait and see before you guys just just totally condemn her? And my, I think their whole thing is like, it's, I told you so. You know, that's what that's yeah. that's where they want to go with it. And I'm like, right, man, life it life is not that drastic. That in my mind, I'm like, it's not that big a deal. Like if she decides to be a secular artist, so be it. We still have all these other yeah, Christian but, artists. Okay, couple couple, couple <laughs> things. Though. Yeah. Isn't it a big deal though? Uh, well, I mean, to them, sure. To me, it's not. You know. No, but like, I mean, let's let's break it down by Christianity, like the the gospel, the message, salvation, all that mm-hmm. stuff. So, if she's a Christian, that means she's going to heaven, right? Like she's saved by Jesus, mm-hmm. and uh, 
And if she turns out to not be a Christian, that means she's going to the other place. She's going to burn in hell for eternity. Isn't that kind of a big deal? That is a big deal. But but here's the thing. We don't know what her personal relationship with, with, with Jesus is. We don't know. I mean, we only see bits and bits and pieces of her in the public eye. We don't know what she right. does in private. You know, right. we don't know, you know, how she prays. We don't know anything about no. her. We just have this public persona that that right. we are trying to to judge her by. And and the whole thing is, is like, you know, judgment's not ours anyway. So why are we trying to judge right. her in the first place? My whole thing. But yeah, the funny thing. Yeah, the funny thing is you could actually use a lot of scripture to defend her right now. Uh-huh. Um, because a lot of these people judging her are being very pharisaical. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah. Which Jesus, Jesus condemned the Pharisees. Oh, yeah, dude. Like, like my, my so. whole thing is like, you know, the, the holier than thou's. That's one of the reasons, right. like, I didn't like church for a long time. You know, and, right. and the church that I go to now, I don't feel judged when I go there. There's people that do judge. Don't get me wrong. But at the mm-hmm. same time, like, I, you know, the way I was living. and Like, if, if you had three beers and then karaoke, you might get more judged. Oh, absolutely. But, but my behavior, because I, I am in the faith, is is not to go that route, you know. Is is, mm-hmm. is to to try to stay away from those sorts of things, and and it on on a uh, on a human level, you know, church and 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 I won't say church, but like religion, I won't even say religion. Like, and a relationship with God should help, try to try to make you a better person, a better human being. You know, that's that's the, I think like uh, it it should show in the way that you interact with the world. You know, you right. know what I mean. Well, yeah, yeah I, hear, I hear you. What about all the people who, who don't have religion in their life at all? Yeah. Who don't even believe in a God. Right. Who also strive to be the best version of themselves, like myself. Yeah. I'm, I consider myself in that category. Right. Good, good so, for you, man. Like, like, and that's, so, no, that's one of the things. Like, like you know, somebody had sent me uh, just this last week a, I guess they had a, a Bible verse that was talking about, you know, people that deny God. And I'm like, oh, this is, <laughs> this is our, the, the deny God's existence, that they're fools and, you know, um, nothing, nothing they, they, they do will be good. Right. There's, there's right, a Bible verse right. all about it. And, and, and yeah. I was like, yeah, but there's, there's, there's people that are, are not in the faith that do good things. So, you know, how, right. how can, how can that be? And so, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I, I haven't reconciled that in my mind, but at the same time, you know, I, I think of it and I'm like, well, you know, all, all good and all, and all love originates from God. Right. And so it, it has infiltrated, it's probably the wrong word, but at the same time it has, it has touched, um, society. It, it is, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it has filtered into moral good and, and, and that sort of thing comes from God. That's, that's what I believe, you know? And then, you mm-hmm. know, you had this, this, uh, Confucianity post where it was just like, this guy was like, evil doesn't come from God, you know? Uh, and, and then this other guy, I guess said, well, you know, you should look at your scriptures. And this other guy was like, well, maybe you should look at the <laughs> yeah. scriptures because it does. God did create evil. And, you know, oh, you're just taking that out of context, right? That's how it all ended up. And, and, and I'm like, well, yeah, God did create evil. And the reason that evil was created is so that we can use our free will to choose. That's, that's the way I look at it. You know what I mean? So it's, it's just like a, a thing. And, and I'm like, okay. I mean, there, there's so many, there's so many levels of, of thought processes that go into so many things. Right. And I look at it and I'm like, okay, well, I, I haven't formulated an opinion on that, you know, and, and, you know, a, a church, a, a very, a very, uh, devout Christian who's, who's very biblically read would say, well, go to the Bible. It'll tell you all you need to know, you know? And, and my whole thing is I'm, I'm not super, super Bible literate, never have been, um, and, and, you know, that's, that's something I, I want to work on. I want to read the Bible more, but you know, it's just one of those things where, you know, I, I don't like the idea that Christians will pull, um, uh, a Bible verse and, and, and say this, well, I'm like, what does it say after that? What does it say before that? You know? So, so you're taking, you're taking a, a Bible verse and you're using that contextually inside of this argument, right? And at the same time, there's a counter argument on the other side. Well, what about this scripture from the the secular world or a non-believer who knows Mm -hmm. the Bible? They can do the same thing, right? Okay, let me let me 
Yeah, there's a lot to be said about this. Let me let me give you an example of because I know this out of context thing. Mm-hmm. It's like like it's like it's like throwing the playing the race card or the sexism card or like the what it's like it's a card that gets played a lot, right? right? And Christians use it a lot in defense of scripture, um, but really anybody can play that card. So an atheist can can say, well, you're you're not putting it in the right context. Mm-hmm. Like for example, when an atheist might say, um, you shouldn't be condemning gay people Mm -hmm. but christians will say oh it's in the bible but then they'll say well it's in the old testament and the old testament's been a done done away with because of the new because of the new covenant of the new testament right 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 so so it can kind of go both ways Mm -hmm. but all that being said let me let me make this point if i if i write a book Mm -hmm. and i and i and i create a religion and or a manifesto or whatever and somewhere in my book i tell people they should go out and kill women and children, hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Now, you tell me, is there ever a proper defense of that to say it's, well, in context? What do you, honestly, between you and me, if I wrote a book and I said, you know, these people should go out and kill the women and children of these other people, if I wrote that in my book, right? do you honestly think I could hide behind that? Well, you're taking it out of context. <laughs> I would say that you're insane. And I know that in the Old Testament, it, it's in there. So, you know what I'm saying? Like Mm -hmm. you need to, you need to get rid of these people because yeah. So, so yeah, no, the, oh man. So that's what, that's why I mean. Like the, the taking it out of context thing, it only goes so far. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same thing with the slavery argument. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, I bring it up on a lot of confusionity posts, which you might have seen about like, you know, the Bible does not condemn slavery. Right. I mean, I saw I saw your post. I just went through them before we uh, we got on this. So, yeah. um, Yeah. And it's kind of a it's kind of a heavy like, well, how do you reconcile that? You know what I mean? Like there's there's a lot of things like in there that like, how do you reconcile it? And, you know, some people will, will wash it with, hey, that those were the times. That's how how it was back then. And I'm like, that doesn't make it right. You know, I mean, right, and, and, right. and there's a lot of, lot of things like when I first, first became, or I guess went back into church. Cause like I told you uh, before I had, I had been baptized when I was a little kid and it was kind of a scary thing for me because it was just like, you know, they, they saved me and baptized me in the same day. And it was, it was kind of a scary thing for a 12 year old to go through. Cause like, what did I just do? You know? Um, Wait, wait, wait. How was it scary? Was it scary because you didn't know what was happening? It, pretty or? much. Like, I had I had just gone with a friend. Like, I had stayed the night, you know, like you do when you're a kid. And, and the next day, his his mom's like, okay, we're going to church. And, and like, nobody said... Wait, wait. So your your parents didn't know anything about this? No. Like, no. Wow. They didn't. So, so, like, the next day, we wake up. And, Isn't that kind of crazy in and of itself? A little bit. Somebody's parents taking another child... Right. To go get baptized, I, that sounds kind of crazy to me. Yeah, well, that is, that is, I, I now that you put it that way, yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but but in all honesty, so so they took me to church and like you know we're in the Sunday school class and they're talking about this Jesus guy and he loves and you know do you want to have Jesus in your heart and I'm like it sounds cool to me man he sounds like a really nice guy and to have him in my heart sounds really mm-hmm. cool and so that mm-hmm. was them saving me and then the next thing you know like after after uh, Sunday school, you know, they have, it was the day that they're doing baptisms. Next thing I know, I'm like naked in a robe. Uh, and I had to get undressed, which that was even, even more weird for a 12 year old. Right. And wow. and they had these robes that you put on to, to get good thing. There were no Catholic priests oh, my around. Goodness. Yeah. <laughs> but so I, I went into the baptism and you know, my biggest thing was like, my clothes are over here and you're telling me I got to go out on that side. How are my clothes going to get over there? Right. <laughs> and so it said, Oh, don't worry. Somebody will take them over there for you. And I'm like, all right, well, whatever. And so the next thing I know, I'm standing in front of a congregation of like 300 people getting baptized. Oh my God. Yeah. Dude. And so I, this, this almost sounds criminal. Like I, it almost sounds criminal. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I didn't like my baptism experience, my, you know, my original one. So, so I re, re bapt to do that to a minor without the parental consent. That sounds illegal. Yeah. Well, it's, it happened a long time ago. I'm sure the statutes of limitations is it's over. No. no, I'm just, yeah, I'm just saying yeah. like, this is a crazy story for me. But I, about. but I thought I had joined a cult. I did. I was like, I don't know anything about this religion stuff because I had never been to church, right? right? And so, right. I, oh, wow, and, right. and there was no discipleship afterward. There was no like, okay, well, you know, and I was just like, I'm not going back there. There's no way. So let's see. So these other parents of your friend who you stayed over at their place, 
Right. They, it was more more the mom, not like because I don't think the, I never met the dad. I don't I don't think he was around or he was always TDY or something. Okay. Yeah. So this mom of your friend took you to church, and you were like, okay, and you just kind of went along with getting ba- baptized and saved as a twelve year old, and you yeah. take off your clothes and you wear a robe, and right. uh, you're walking, you're wading through water or something, right? Well, it's like it's like a you're. It's, it's like a platform that's above, like, you know, where, like, the pulpit is. So th- there, it was, like, really high, too. So we're talking, like, probably 15, 16 feet above the pulpit, right? Jeez. Yeah, literally. <laughs> so so I'm up there, and, you know, you walk down into this pool. You're, you're up high, and then you walk down into this pool, and it's kind of like a jacuzzi type thing. And then, you know, they, they say the whole, you know, baptize you, you know, uh, it's our understanding that you have accepted Jesus in your heart, Mama, and I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, right? So they dunk me under, and then I go to uh, the other side and, you know, get get dressed out of this, this soaking wet, like, uh, nylon robe. And uh, it's, it's like, very vivid, the memory. It's, it's really weird, like, how I can remember, like, certain details. Mm-hmm. But, like, uh, you know, get dressed, and then that's it. That's the whole experience and then you know we go home and the whole drive home i'm like what the heck did i just do you know i have no idea there was there was you know have being somebody that had never really heard of of the gospel at all and then all of a sudden you're getting dunked underwater you're like what on earth that just happened way too fast for my 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 little mind could not understand you know what was going on or what it was or anything so right. so it was just it's just a semi traumatic experience um and then, you know, for the longest time, you know, I went, you know, away. So, wait, wait, wait. When you say traumatic, right? do you feel like it was a negative experience? Or was it just what the hell's going on kind of thing? Like, you're just kind of confused? Um, no, I, I, I was scared. I, like, honestly, I thought I joined a cult. Oh, okay. I, didn't, I didn't know. You know, I had seen, like, horror movies and stuff like that. And I was just like, I, I have no idea, man. I was just... You know, I was a young-minded 12, 12, 13-year-old who didn't know anything about anything. Right. And the next thing you know, you're, you know, what did I just do? You know, my right. parents weren't there. Yeah, I didn't have any, I guess, any of my my circle of influence with me to say this is, to explain anything to me. You know what I'm saying? So, right. like, so I had no nothing to gauge it against. Right. And, and so it's kind of like you're out there, you know, probably like the first time I had done something without um my parents knowledge or anything you know what i mean so it's kind of like you know did i make a, a a good decision or was that a terrible thing to do i have i had no idea so um and then that's, like i said yeah so it, so it's just so strange i yeah. wonder how often that happens well i don't know i mean we were in north carolina it was a southern baptist church it probably happens a lot there yeah. <laughs> but, it's uh, almost like a it's like a form of kidnapping in a way like just could it could be i mean my my dad was uh he wasn't there he was like he was tdy uh-huh. so you know my mom had to let me go to my friend's house to stay the night and right. you know for all she knew she, i was still at his house in the morning you know i didn't go to church i was just playing video games or right. outside playing in his yard or something she she had no idea and, so uh, was this all your friend's mom or was your friend also really christian or was he part of this kind of like yeah buddy like come on let's go to church and yeah i mean like they they treated it like it was a normal thing so i just i just went along with it you know Mm -hmm. so you know is what it is all right but then then like later on in life you know like i said i I didn't go back to church after that and i stayed away and because it was a it it was it was a a traumatic experience you know like i said and and so so did you um, did you think that like all these religion kind of things or cult like whether it's Catholicism or church or Protestant or whatever, you in your head, based on your twelve year old experience, did you feel like all this religion is kind of cult like and I I I don't I don't think I did. I just felt like I don't want to be around that right now. You know what I mean? Like I I just don't wanna go through something like that again. You okay. know. Um and, and essentially it's it's like like in our church it's it's one of those things where the kid has to has to profess it and and you know but it doesn't take it takes time you know you have to learn learn about it before you know what the heck's going on 
and like you know I remember at some point my daughter um like when she was like five or so like uh she uh we were at the supermarket one day and and the cashier she just started talking to the cashier and she goes you know I I um I know about someone and you might not know about him to the cashier right and she's like oh who's that and she goes well if you if you know him he he can he can save your heart and you know so she was she was like evangelizing to oh us. my god Wait, yeah, how, how, I, how old was he she, you said five she, she was five yeah Jesus, and man. and she you know and the the cashier was like you know what i feel so blessed by by you talking to me about that that i was having a bad day and like it turned her day around you know what i mean so you know and i after we left i had st- you know, talked to my daughter a little bit and i just said do, do you understand what you're talking about and she goes yeah you know you know jesus saves you and you know if you let him into your heart you can go to heaven and I was like, okay, you know, and you know, I was can talking can I about, just can I just throw, ask a question here? Yeah. At that at that same point in her life, did she still believe in Santa Claus? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Are you gonna come back to that, or why, why are you asking uh, that? No, I was just curious. Um, we can come back to it later, but right. I think I, I think I know where you're going with that, but yeah. Um, but anyway, so. Um, you know, and I, I just asked her and I'm like, I think she's too young in my mind. I'm like, she's too young to actually really realize it. I, it's not right. really her choice. It's just that that's what she's learning about. Right. Um, and so I want it to be something that she decides later, not something that, you know, she's just been taught, you know, it's, it's, it's her ultimately her decision. So, right. but my, my, my per not my purpose my uh my goal is just to set a foundation where she can you know learn about things um you know we always we always try to teach her you know both sides the world teaches this and and you know the moral the moral right thing to do according to the bible is this and mm-hmm. um you know so you're trying to give her a, a good moral compass to start out in life and you know uh I think you would you would call it indoctrination and you know, <laughs> it's it's not choice it's not mild, her choice mild yeah. and maybe with you mild indoctrination right but uh I mean because you grew up in this situation like mm-hmm. she she has something I never had growing up right. she has you know she she was born in the church not in the church but you know what I mean she she's been going to church since day one so but ultimately like it's her decision like I I I used to teach the teens at at church right and I see a bunch of them that don't go to church anymore. And I, I question that, like, well, you know, did, did I do something or did I say something that, that helped to trigger them to do that? And ultimately, it's, it's not me. You know, mm-hmm. I tried my best to, to be honest with them and just say, hey, look, you know, I'm new to Christianity. I'm learning about it. Let's learn about it together. You know, I was just trying to be honest about it. And, you know, I don't have all the answers. And you know, I can speak to you about my experiences in life and, you know, um, how I believe that, that God has delivered me from those sorts of things. You know, um, it, it just, without, without God, I think I would be dead right now. So, because I was going, going the wrong way. Um, so Mm -hmm. that's, that's just, you know, I, it's something I, I, I wouldn't say cling to. It's something that, that has built my belief structure. Yeah. Um, so it, 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 it's, it's, it's a, it's a weird thing, man. Like, you know, I, I sit and I, I hear what you're saying and, you know, I, I look at the, the way that you're looking at the world and, and I feel like, oh, well that's, that's way I used to look at, at things when I was younger. Like when I was in college, I was where you are. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, this is why the interesting thing about us is that we've flip-flopped. <laughs> You know, mm-hmm. I grew up very religious, Christian. Um, you know, it became more serious to me in my, you know, late teens, early twenties. Became like a true Christian, whatever that means. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, was going at it hardcore for a while until right. thirty, and then I left the church. Mm-hmm. And then, on the flip side, you were not raised religious, and you became a Christian, and now it's a big part of your life and your identity. Right. right. So that's what's interesting is that we've known each other for a long time since high school. And we've, you know, <laughs> literally 
just changed paths in life. Yeah, um, well, I mean, I, I, I find it interesting, like, to say the least, like, because, you know, I mean, I think, like, one of my first encounters with, I guess, the the gospel, uh, aside, from, I, it was after the baptism when I was 12, was the whole Club Beyond thing with, with Sam. You know? Oh, right. And, you know, I had gone to that Italy trip, and at the end, you know, they, they, they kind of had the the call, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. you know, who, who here, you know, would like to have Jesus in their heart, all that other stuff. And, you know, uh, another guy that was on the trip, you know, I'm not going to name any names, but he, uh, he, he stood up and I was just like, Oh really? You know, I'm like, you know, it, I got the, I got some of those weird feelings that I had back when I was 12, you know, when that was going on, I'm like, I'm not standing up, you know, uh, mm-hmm. not that, not that I wasn't feeling the pull because I was, but at the same time, I'm like, nah, it's, you know, it's nothing, you know, and, um, and probably it was, it was something like, I, I look at, I look at Sam in our lives and, and I, I'm like, you know, he planted some good seeds. He was never forcing anything upon you. It was like, you would go to club beyond and, um, but anyway, so like, it was non-threatening, you know, you would go there, you would play games and, uh, you know, hang out with each other and, and then you just do like a small devotional at the end you know, and it was fine. Like I had, I, I didn't feel any threat, threatened. I wasn't threatened in any way by it. I, I just thought, Oh yeah. Okay. You know, uh, it can't be a good, uh, a bad thing to pray, you know? So, mm-hmm. you know, so, so whatever. So, and so, so it was a good experience it. overall. Oh yeah. You, for you sure. felt like good times and community. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, and, he, and, and no to pressure. This day, yeah. To this day, I consider him a friend, you know? So, I mean, we don't talk cause he's way out and uh, I, I believe he's out like in the in the west somewhere. Uh, I want to say it's Utah, but I'm not sure. Um, but uh, so you know, it's just one of those things where you know I feel like his his influence on my life was a good influence. And you know, after I had gotten back into church, I I remember I had sent him a message that said, "Hey man, you know, I I feel like you helped me get where I'm at uh, on my faith journey just because." you know, you were there and you were, uh, that kind of positive influence in my life. So, you know, it was, it was it, it's, it's good, you know, but then, you know, in late, like there's, so I, I'm, I'm jumping timeline all over the place here. So, but like in college, right. There was a, a couple of times where I had this, uh, like, this like w- with what you're doing with your story, like, I'd love for you to kind of walk us through like the I don't is that I don't know if that's what you're doing but like kind of your journey toward becoming a Christian is that yeah yeah I mean yeah. I mean there's there's parts of it yeah I'm, I'm kind of getting getting to it but like I mean I'm jumping all around the timeline and I apologize for that but um you know I had I like I said I had this college roommate who's who was a a, a chaplain son you know so mm-hmm. you you can kind of relate to that mm-hmm. um but uh he was pr- probably one of the most uh when I first met him most of you know, he was very, uh, non-religious to say, to say it nicely. Like, uh, well, was he he kind of anti-religion? He he wasn't anti-religion. He was just, let's just say he he didn't mind sinning. (laughs) He was, uh, he was pretty out there. So, you know, so he was like a sinful heathen guy. Yeah. Religion really wasn't a part of his life or decision-making process. Right. Like I, I, Outwardly, you wouldn't know that he he grew up right. in faith. Okay. So, um, and you know, at some point, he he started going back to church, and you know, he um, he at one point said, "Hey, you know, you're welcome to come." And and I was just like, "Eh, well, you know, whatever." And uh, one night, I was I was you know I was on a bender, um, and I stayed up all night, and you know, I I was half half asleep, and I I had this vision, right. And it could be drug induced. It could be, you know, alcohol induced. It could have been whatever. Um, and uh, the vision was this very, very ornate duck. It, it's it's gonna <laughs> sound stupid, dude. It's it's insane, right? Um, okay. And and the duck was like Brian. And, and that's when you knew you should go to the University of Oregon. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, like uh, but the duck said Brian, you should go to church. And I was just like, what? Get out of here, right? And I immediately grabbed my note, my notepad and I, I drew the duck. Right. Okay. And, and <laughs> if I find, if I, if I find the, uh, the notepad, I'll, I'll show you the image one day. <laughs> you still have the drawing. 
I, I don't know if I have the, the notebook some, somewhere. I might, um, but I haven't seen it in, in ages. But uh, so when he got back from work, because he worked like the midnight shift, he's, you know, I'm like still awake. And he's, he comes home, he showers, he gets ready, and he's, he's headed out the door. And I'm like, he's like, you want to go? And I'm like, where are you going? He's like, I'm going to church. So he walked like two miles across campus, right? And uh, I'm, I'm, like I said, I've been up all night, so I'm sleep deprived. And I go to uh, this church and we're early and there's like nobody there. It's weird. Um, and uh, all of a sudden, like uh, my buddies, he starts talking to the pastor and you know they they're kind of over there and I'm kind of just waiting on the in the wings or whatever and then all of a sudden this this pastor guy comes to me and you know they start talking to me and I tell him about the stupid duck <laughs> you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. and I'm like you guys must think I'm crazy and then, and you know he was like oh no they you know it's 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 common for you know people to have visions and and them not make sense and you know but you're here right and I'm like yeah, I'm here and they said, let's, let's, uh, let's go back to the offices and, and have a chat real quick. And, uh, we go back into this, like, I guess on the side of the church, they had like this little trailer complex and, uh, that's where their offices were. And, you know, you walk in, it's like your typical trailer, like, uh, but it's not like you, you're not walking on the side, you're walking in, in the end of the, the, uh, the trailer. And so there's a long hallway and then there's offices on, on either side. And so we walk down and we don't go into any offices. We're just in the hallway. And my my back is to the, the, the end of the hallway. And they're like kind of arched around in the hallway. And now I feel cornered, right? Uh-oh. Is this yeah, triggering those old feelings from 12-year-old? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So so I'm like, um, yeah, uh, you know, they're talking to me. And, and, and I, I can't even remember the, the conversation. I, and I just say, uh, where's your bathroom? <laughs> and, you, and then you got the hell out of there. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I just left. <laughs> you know, they're like, "Oh, yeah. it's in the church," and you know, I'll show it to you. I'm like, "No, no, no. just just tell uh, me where it's at." Yeah. And, and 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 so I walk, I walk out of the trailer, I walk into the church, and immediately walk out the other side of the church, and I walk home, right? And uh, you know, my buddy comes back later, and he's like, "What happened, dude?" And I was just like, "I just couldn't do it, man. I felt cornered. I I just felt really weird, and I I just had to leave." And, um, I, you know, that was the end of that story. And then like later on, um, he said, Oh, we have this evangelist guy coming, you know, if you want to come and check it out, you know, and, and I was still having these, this pool, you know what I'm saying? Like I wanted to know more about what, what God was about and all this other stuff. Um, plus the duck told me that I need to go to church. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm like, all right, well I'll go check it out. And, uh, it's inside of, a, a inside of a lecture hall where you know I had my philosophy class and so I'm like oh I'm familiar with the surroundings whatever this is cool and so this evangelist guy he's he's up front and he's talking and you know I can't remember the specifics of what he was actually talking about but at some point you know he had an altar call and all these people went up front and he was healing them like touching them and healing them and I, and and all these people were moaning and and crying and it was just it was like for somebody that's not churched, that seems very cultish. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, this is very strange. And I was like, oh, I do not like this, right? And and I, I said uh, to my buddy, I'm like, hey, uh, I'm going to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and I left again. <laughs> uh, noticing a trend here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so you know, and then I guess the third time he, he invited me to, like, an Easter service, right? And... Uh, uh, so I went to it and, you know, I was like, oh, there's a lot of pretty girls here. You know, there's a lot of pretty girls. Okay. And now then, Christianity starts getting real. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, it it can't be that bad. You know, all these pretty girls are here. You know, I'm a single mm -hmm. guy, whatever. But um, I, I still never went back after that. Like, you know, just had the Easter service and, and that was it. Like, and that was my whole experience in college with, with church. Okay, um, and then uh, afterward, uh, you know, I I went back to living my life the way I was living my life, and you know, I had ups and I had downs and all this other good stuff. And my my buddy Ruben from uh, from Berlin, mm -hmm. um, back then I was I was you know smoking pot and you know kind of like a hippie hippie type dude or whatever, and and you know my life was was nowhere near being together. 
And he's like, dude, what are you doing to yourself? Right. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, look at you. You're like a shell of who I used to know. And I was just like, uh, well, I'm just living life, man, trying to survive. And he goes, you're not. You're not living life at all. And he didn't bring religion into it. He just said, as a friend to a friend, dude, you're, you're screwing up. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I immediately, you know, upon, I guess, his judgment from, you know, my, my friend saying, hey, dude, you, you need to get your act together. I quit smoking pot, you know. Uh, I wouldn't say that I quit drinking, but at the same time, you know, I uh, I quit smoking pot. So, um, and then... Uh, was that, do you think that was a big part of the problem, the pot smoking? Uh, I, I think it was, uh, as far as being motivated to, to excel and to be better in life, probably, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, so you weren't, uh, you weren't offended by what, anything he said, or you didn't get defensive. You were just kind of like, huh, yeah, yeah. maybe you're right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I respect, I respect his opinion. So, yeah. you know, um, and so, you know, he, he was down, down in training down in DC and I would go down every weekend and, uh, you know, we'd hang out, we would go clubbing and we'd go, you know, do, you know, just things, just hang out and, and party pretty much. It was mm-hmm. party time. And, uh, you know, I met my wife, uh, at the time, obviously she wasn't my wife, but I met her and, uh, we, we would hang out every weekend and, uh, and she was, and she like was a, already Christian, right? Yeah. She grew up, she grew up in the church. Okay. So, so, um, you know, she, you know, we, we, we would hang out every weekend and, um, essentially, you know, at some point, uh, she was, she was there on an exchange and, uh, she was an au pair who was learning English and, uh, her exchange was up. So she had to go back to Costa Rica. Where was this geographically? Is this Illinois? No, this is, uh, Washington, DC, uh, DC, Virginia, Maryland. So, okay. So, so her exchange ends, she has to go back and I say to myself, well, I, I, I'm in love with this girl. How can I, how can I keep her? Um, and, uh, you know, I, essentially told her I was going to marry her. I didn't necessarily propose like your traditional. Proposal. But how long, how long had you, had you been dating at that point? About six months. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy quick. Right. Yeah. But like sometimes you just know. And, yeah. uh, so, you know, I, I, I just say, Hey, uh, I lean in one night when we're hanging out, um, in Alexandria, Virginia, at this place called Las Tapas that has like a cover band, a Gypsy King cover band that we, we love to go listen to. And I just said, Hey, uh, you, you know, I'm going to marry you. Right. And, uh, <laughs> it's such a bad proposal. I got to redo it sometime. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, so I, you know, and how did she respond to that? She didn't really say much. She just kind of giggled and so just and, laughed it off. Yeah. And, and yeah. but it, it was kind of an understanding. Like we, we, we felt like, it was going to happen. So, um, she went back to Costa Rica and the whole thing was like, she, she, you know, she was a dentist. So she had to go through her training to, to complete, uh, whatever the last step was in her training to become a dentist in co- a practicing dentist. And, uh, you know, I got my tax return that year and I said, well, I'm coming. I'm, uh, I'll see you soon, you know, and she was going to be there for a year and come back. And I said, I got my tax return. I got some money here. I'm going to come visit you. And uh, she, she said, can you, can you wait till July? And I was like, uh, why? And she goes, well, let's just get married in July. <laughs> and I was like, all right. So I waited till July. And went down, I went down there. Uh, we got married, and she came back. And, uh, but before I went down there in July, her, her mother asked her if I was going to take premarital counseling. Right. And I'm like, counseling, what are you talking about? You know, like, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, I don't know if you've ever heard of it. You probably have. Yeah, I know the whole Christian premarital counseling thing. Yeah. Right. So I was like, I don't know what that is, but if that's Cause you're, you're still, to... even though you know, she's Christian, you're really yeah. not into the whole thing yet at all. Oh no, 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 not at all. So, you know, when her mom visited, we had gone to church and I went to church with her one other time and it was like a a very liturgical service and it was kind of like, you know, it was, I didn't, nothing, I didn't nothing, get, yeah. nothing that would make you want to ask where the bathroom is. No, no, it, it was non-threatening. Nobody bothered us. Nobody talked to us. It was kind of non-threatening at all. So, <laughs> right. you know, I was just hanging out with my girlfriend. So, um, but, uh, so I was like, I, I don't know what premarital counseling is, but if, if I need to do that 
to marry you, I'll go do it. Yeah. And so her mom contacted uh, the district uh, from the church that they attended down there, who contacted the district to the church here, who contacted the pastor, um, and he had called me, and I went in, and I started the program of counseling. And, you know, they tell you how and where God fits in. You know, if you've had past indiscretions, you know, to help, you pray to help minimize those memories, all those sort, sorts of things, right? And then um, at the end, he goes, well, you know, we're, we're done. You know, uh, I would like to invite you to come to one of our services, you know, kind of check it out. And I, I, at that time, they had three services. They had like a, uh, a traditional, they had like a blended, and they had like a straight out contemporary service. And uh, so I would go to the contemporary service, and the main reason was it was later in the day, um, because I would, you know, still be out hanging out, partying, and and all that good stuff. And yeah, uh, in the early days, I would I would go there hungover, but I would go, um, just because you know he had, he invited me, and and I actually liked it because you know they were jamming out on guitars, and it was kind of like a concert type feel, and then they had a message, and you know no no big deal, um, and and so. Then I went and I, I got married, brought her back, and we started attending the church. And it's kind of been, that's that's the end of the story, right? But at the same time, it's not. Well, that sounded like a very gradual, like you just kind of went along with it kind of thing. There well, didn't seem to be like a, was there not like a dramatic moment or like a, you didn't go up and say, I'm saved or, you know, accept Jesus or anything like that? No. Isn't that, no. Okay. It, it was, it was you know, because I had already been saved and I had already been baptized, even though it wasn't the best experience I had already been. So, you know, I couldn't really? deny. So, I couldn't deny that it, it it is what it was. You know what I mean? So you okay? So you still believed that there was some power to that thing you did at age twelve? I do. I believe that I believed that I was put there, um, or I was taken there because God wanted me. And. I wasn't ready for it. And then in college, I went there, but I wasn't ready for it. You know what I'm saying? So it, it was kind of like, but even even still, it's kind, it kind of really traumatic. But at the same time, I, I feel like it had to have happened. You know, we are we are who we are because of our past experiences. That kind of thing. You know, everything everything leads to now. Anyway, so so, you know, and then... You know, we had some traumatic things happen later on, a couple years later. Um, you know, my, mom, uh, my uh, mother-in-law passed away. Uh, we had lost a baby. Um, and, you know, I, I got, like, why, why would God do this? Why would he allow this to happen so quickly? Like, her mom was, she, di- she was diagnosed, and, like, six months later, she was gone. You know, mm-hmm. it, was, it was very fast. And, uh, you know, my wife went down, down there to help settle her mom's affairs and uh she was what uh about uh i would say 15 15 weeks pregnant when she went she was about 19 weeks when she was going to come back and uh you know she had some bleeding before the day before she was supposed to come back and um i get a call while i'm at a meeting at at the church like church offices and it's scary like you know she's in the hospital I'm I'm here in Maryland. She's in the hospital in Costa Rica, and uh, I go back in after I, I talk to her. I'm like, all right, well, let me figure out what to do. I'll give you a call back, and uh, um, you know, I go back in and I explain what's happening to the pastor, and they they buy me a plane ticket. The church church buys me a plane ticket, and they send me to Costa Rica, and it's the cheapest ticket to Costa Rica I've ever seen, two hundred and seventy dollars round trip jeez yeah and i'm just like I, wow i feel like going to costa rica right now yeah well if it's 270 i'd go yeah. there every weekend you know wow. so but um so i went down there and uh essentially um i was there i don't know how many days i was there i want to say two or three days and uh um you know her water breaks and uh while while her like they they're just doing an exam we went in there, she's laying down, you know, the doctor's checking things out and her water breaks. And I feel this, this heat hit my entire body. Cause I know once that water breaks, delivery's going to happen. Right. Yeah. And, uh, 
So I'm like, we just lost our baby. And I get really hot. And I'm sitting on this bed, like, that's inside the room. Like, she's on she's on a bed in the middle of the room. I'm on the bed that's kind of on the edge of, like, on the, on the wall. And, you know, I'm, like, hot and my heart's beating, my heart's racing. And then I feel like I'm shaking, you know. But it turns out there's an earthquake. And, like, I'm, I'm the whole building is shaking. And uh, I'm, I'm like, oh, my God. And, and the uh, doctor's like, it's okay. Uh, it's all right. And, and, and I think he's talking to my wife, you know. Um, but he's, he's, he's saying, you know, this building is built to withstand earthquakes. And I'm just like, earthquake, you know. And, uh, you know, we, we have, it's all said and done. We go back to the room. Um, and uh, she has to birth this baby. And uh, the baby, you know, they give her progesterone to help uh, advance the pregnancy along and, uh, I guess, start labor. And uh, the baby's born. He's alive. And, uh, you know, he dies right there in front of me. And uh, hmm. it's the most traumatic experience of my life. Right. Um they take yeah. the baby away. My wife has to finish the rest of the parts of labor. Um, and then they take my wife to the operating room because she's hemorrhaging. Hmm. You know, they uh, it's called a DNC. So they, they clean out the rest of the stuff, right? The placenta and all that other stuff. I don't mean to get graphic, but it's, it is what it is. Right? Yeah, right. Um, so during that, she, she's hemorrhaging. Uh, they give her some stuff to help. Uh, shrink the uterus um, down to help uh, stay off bleeding and bleeding out and all that other stuff. She's now, you know, she comes back, she's anemic, um, you know, and she's, my wife's hurt and we, we lost this baby. And um, so, you know, they, they had put the did baby in. Did they explain the anything? Did they say anything medically what happened or? Uh, well, my, my wife had, she was diagnosed with something that's called incompetent cervix. Now they call it, uh, what do they call it now? Uh, essentially it's, it's her, her cervix won't stay close. Okay. So it was going to happen regardless. Um, what, well, we didn't what, know that. You don't know what, that until. What was going to happen regardless? Her, her cervix would open and the 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 baby would be born early regardless hmm. okay. so yeah so you know we're in the hospital and they had taken the baby back and they put the baby in a container like a plastic container right and you know he's dead and i i go back behind the nursing station like they they have this room back there and i see the container sitting on a shelf <laughs> right <laughs> or like a like a table Oh, and man. so I go back there when the nurses are around to go look at them. And uh, this nurse comes. surreal. Yeah. So this, this nurse catches me back there and she starts yelling at me, right? Yeah, you're not you can't, supposed you, to be here. You're not supposed to be back there. And, and I was like, I just want to see my baby, right? And she goes, you're not supposed to. And she just keeps with it. And I look at her and I, dead in her eye. And I said, this is my baby. You are not going to keep me from my, my child, right? And I don't know if she understood me. She was yelling at me in Spanish. Well, right. So, I was just going to ask. This is in a Puerto Rican hospital. I mean, a Costa Rican hospital, right? Right, right. Yeah. And so, you know, they, you know, some other, some other people came. They settled me down. And, you know, I went back to the room. And, and I just said, hey, I just want to know where, where the baby is at all times. Okay. So after, after, they had, after the, I had gone away, they had, you know, put the formaldehyde inside the container all this other stuff. And then they put, then they moved it down the hallway to this medical waste area. Right. And I'm like, mm. like it's, it's essentially a closet that has a garbage chute in it. Wow. Yeah. And I'm like, I keep going back to that room, you know, and I had put some tape over the, the actual closing mechanism so that I can go back in there anytime I wanted to. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, we, we decided you know, we wanted to um, donate him to to medical, to the university, um, hmm. and because we just we just thought, you know, I don't want him just to be discarded like a piece of trash, um, yeah. 
And so, you, uh, so you didn't want to do some kind of burial or anything? Um, no, I mean, he was. I don't know, man. Like, now that you're saying that, <laughs> you don't say it. I'm like, maybe we should have. I, I don't know. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you're, you're, you have so well, many emotions. The, yeah, going in on. the heat of yeah. the moment. Yeah, exactly. You don't, you don't know what to do, what to think, what to, right, right. what, what's the most rational decision because you're not in your right mind. Right, right. Um, so we decided to do that. We, we, we read the Bible together. We put some, you know, we wrote our goodbyes on the outside of the container. And we donated them to the university. Uh, and the whole thought there is, you know, if somebody can learn, learn and make the world a better place because of this, this tragedy in our life, then, you know, right. it's, it's for the better of the world. Um, yeah, but after all of that had happened, I, you know, they had, it was, we stayed at the hospital that we stayed in was a private hospital. Costa Rica has socialized medicine, but they also have private hospitals. And so we were in this private hospital that had like a, uh, it, it was a Catholic hospital so they had like a little like chapel but it was like the whole hospital was built connected to this really old 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 chapel and uh you know you could go in there and you could pray and you could do all these other things and you know i went in there and i was just, i was just like why why you know and 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 i was i was like i i can't i can't even i can't even talk to you you know to god and I'm like, you know, I was so, so angry. And, uh, you know, we, we came back from Costa Rica. And my wife is, you know, she's on disability because she's super anemic. And they had to give her, you know, uh, iron pills and all this other stuff. And, you know, she's not working. And, and I enter into a depression. And, you know, I'm, I'm like, I, I'm going to quit church. And I'm, I'm, I'm just going to leave. You know, I, I can't, I can't reconcile, um, that a God would do this. Right. right. And, you know, I, then I got all the, uh, well, you know, we don't know what God's plans are. We don't know, you know, I got all that stuff. Yeah. And, uh, it's, you know, and so I hear you saying that kind of stuff and I'm like, Oh yeah. Okay. I know, I, I know where you, I know what you're thinking, you know, mm-hmm. I, I've, cause I've been there and people yeah. have told me that and I'm yeah. like, yeah, no, 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 you don't understand. And like, I was, I was in the middle of teaching kids. You know what I mean? When that all happened, I was like, I wasn't like the, the, the leader, but I, I still volunteered to help, you know, uh, be the adult, like a facilitator type situation. Right. And, uh, I stepped back. I was like, I am not in the right mind. I don't know what I would tell these kids. If they asked me an honest question, I might give them where I'm honestly at right now. And right. that would not be, uh, appropriate or beneficial for their, their walk. You know what I mean? So, yeah. and you know, I, but, I went to, the, but then in a way though, that, that very notion yeah. almost kind of bothers me. Yeah, because, I know. I, because yeah, you're having a very real. raw, yeah, real yeah, experience, not, and you're yeah. shielding that from people who might, that actually might be more beneficial for them in their walk, if you want to call it walk, but like right. in their life, uh, their understanding of life and death and meaning. Right. And, well, well, I'll get to that too. Like at some point later on down the road, I... Talked, I talked to them about it. The kids. Yeah, the kids. Yeah. Like, um, there was, uh, like a week where the, the, the youth pastor had to go out of town and he asked me to lead. Like, it, it, we're talking like, you know, months and months after everything had happened. And, uh, you know, I would say almost a year probably. Okay. And, um, I was like, I don't know, man. And he was just like, well, you know, we were, I, when I taught the teens, they had this, this series by Rob Bell called Numa. And I actually got a lot out of it personally. I was Wait, teaching what was it? it? Numa, N O O M A. N O O M A. What was uh-huh. it exactly? It's just like a, a bunch of like little uh, devotionals um, okay. that that Rob Bell, this pastor from from Mars Hill out in uh, I think it's Michigan, um, he had put together. And uh, I've never heard of that. Were, Numa. Yeah, I I have the whole series, dude. So like, what, what does it stand for? Is that an acronym? Uh, it is. And I, I, I want to say it's like breath of God or, or, or I can't remember. <laughs> Actually, I wish I could, but I, I don't remember. <laughs> okay. But, uh, yeah, there's no, no, B, there's no, B no, we can look it up. It, I think it's taken from the Greek. Yeah. It's just, new. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but anyway, um, so it, it, there was a whole series and then all of a sudden, like they had a new one come out and the new one is about Job. 
right? Okay. And I'm just right. like, ho- holy cow, right? I'm sure you because, can relate now to Joe. Oh, yeah, absolutely, 100%. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, curse curse God and die is what they're telling him. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm kind of like, well, yeah, don't ask me that right now because I'm not in the right space to, you know what I mean? So, um, so I end up, we, we can't get the actual video. It doesn't show up in time. But we, I found a two-parter on YouTube. So I go into into the uh, Wednesday night youth group, and I said, hey, you know, um, Brian, uh, the other pastor's name was Brian. I, I said, he's out of town, um, and he asked me to fill in, and um, we, we think that uh, this would be something good to share with you guys. Um, and so we played the video, and uh, during the video, you know, teens are teens, so they're, like, talking, chit-chatting, and... and I'm about to like <laughs> drop my heart on these kids and they're not paying attention. So I get, I get kind of upset. Right. <laughs> and I'm just like, all right, since all you guys want to talk, I'm going to play this video again. And so I played it again and you could hear a pin drop the second time, dude. It was so quiet. All right. And then I had, you know, I had prepared like a, a written testimonial and just explaining to them, you know, like I, I wanted to, to leave this church. I wanted to, how um, how old were these kids? Like they're teenagers, teenage, like uh, okay, teenagers. between ninth and twelfth grade. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I I imagine like it's just us in high school. You know what I mean? Right. It's like some, right. somebody coming and talk to us. Right. And I'm trying to be real, and I'm trying to be raw, and I'm just trying to you know just be honest. And you know, um, at the time there was a, a, a like a Christian artist that came out with a song too, and uh, you know it was it was kind of speaking to me. Um, and, you know, I had met with the pastor prior to this, too. And, you know, I had told him my feelings about wanting to lead the church. And, and uh, you know, he said, he said, well, let me ask you this. He said, do you think that the world will be there to comfort you? And, and, and I said, probably not. Wait, wait, wait. He asked you, do you think the world will be there to comfort you? Yeah, and during my pain or, or, or whatever. Yeah, I'm at, and, yeah, that's why I'm curious. Like, yeah. what what context does he mean? Like, when something terrible happens to you, or no, just like just as I as I am in, in my state of mind right now. You know what I mean? Or if you're surrounded by the community of people that you know love you, like I know I know the, that my church family has love for me and my family. They care about us. You know what I mean? Like we we have a good church, mm-hmm. um, and so he goes. And do you think that you, he said, do you think that you would move further away from God or closer to God if you leave the church? And I said, I, obviously I would move further away. Mm-hmm. And uh, he goes, well, do you want that for you? And do you want that for your family? Like he's, he's asking me honest questions. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? He's, he's not, he's not saying, no, don't go. He's, right. he's letting me go through, you know, my rational thoughts and my, my, you know, he, he's letting me make the choice. So, right. um, and, and so I, I, it, it's the first time and probably the only time I, I'll ever hear a pastor say to somebody, just come and go through the motions because you will heal and you will, you will come back. And, and in all honesty, because of our experience, we can, we can speak to people that are going through similar situations. You know, um, we, we have somebody in our church right now that that's on bed rest. My wife is is visiting her and, and, and trying to help her, you know, she, she, she is there for her mental support and, you know, helping her, you know, answer questions and, and, and keep her spirits high and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, you know, we also, you know, our church is the type that would deliver food to somebody that's in a situation like that. So it's, it's a, like, we are in a good community of believers, right? So, yeah. and it, it, it feels, it feels right. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I look at it and I'm just like, okay. And, and slowly, but surely, you know, I'm, I am getting the fervor and the fire back in my heart, you know, and I mean, I'm, I'm not completely right. And I, and to this point, I still don't volunteer because, uh, for certain things, I, I'll volunteer for some other things, but like, I, I'm not super involved because of the traumatic experiences. And we're talking, this is 10 years ago, dude. You know what I mean? So but I'm still going. Wait, wait, and 10 years ago from today, you mean? Was, yeah, I mean, it happened, was, all, all this happened in 2009, yeah, 2008, okay. 2009. Um, and so, you know, I, I'm there and I'm getting, I'm getting stuff out of it. And, you know, I'm, I'm really into, uh, you know, 
I think like now I listen to Christian music more than I ever had, you know, and it just, to me, it, it feels, I, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, you know, I, I listen to your other podcast. You're like, yeah, your the mind is a powerful thing. Right. Yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's so many things with that. I mean, I heard, I saw another post where you had like a, I think it was, um, what's his name? I think it was his name right now. Billy Graham or, or somebody was saying, you know, you need to program your mind and, and you had it repeating like program your mind. Program. And, oh, it was uh Charles Stanley. Okay. Yeah. It was yeah, Stanley, that YouTube man. video I made. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, I, 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 when that came out when, or when you had posted that, I, I said, I, I kind of agree with it. If that makes sense. And, and the reason being is you are, you, you spit out what you put in, like what you study and what you learn about is what, is what ultimately comes out of your mouth. So, yeah, sure. I mean, however, everyone is programmed to some extent is what I was saying. So mm -hmm. whether that programming works for you or not is something that each individual should really deeply question. Mm -hmm. Um, because I'm not saying programming is bad necessarily because there's constructive programming or negative, harmful, self-harm programming. There's all kinds of, basically when I say programming, I mean you as an individual, whether you're a child or you're an adult, you are receiving messages from mm -hmm. society, from your parents, from a, a book written 2000 years ago, from mm -hmm. a, tele, a televangelist, from your preacher at church, from your friends, from your teachers at school. All of that is what I consider programming. It's all coming in. Mm -hmm. Like you said, like you're receiving all of that, those signals, that message. Right. And it's up to you as an individual to decide, okay, well, I like this message over here. I like this bit here, this bit there. Um, I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like what that person's saying. Right. You know, I'm basically just describing the human experience. Yeah. So, like, every person is going to... You are a reflection of your experiences, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and if we live in a free society, then that means every person should have the freedom to come to their own conclusions about, you know, what they believe and who they are and their identity. Mm -hmm. um, so that's all fine, well, and good. And that's why I, with whatever message I'm putting forth with Confucianity, I never really want to attack people and right. say... You, you shouldn't believe that or you're an idiot for believing that. I mean, one of the things with like a lot of my audience is, is very atheist, you know, and, and often kind of militantly. So, oh yeah. And I've read, I've read some of the comments. Yeah. And the thing is like that, that won't ever be me in the same way that I'm no longer Republican, but I was raised red state Republican, George Bush voting kind of, you know, that's who I used to be. Right, but but at so the same e time, even though feeding, I'm not you're that feeding those people, you know what I'm saying? Well, you're feeding the, the you're feeding that extreme. Not and, really, though. When you look at the majority of my content and the messages that I'm putting forth, uh -huh. I think the worst thing you could say that I'm doing is I'm making fun of things. Like I post yeah. memes and jokes that are funny to me. Well, now, some, I, I agree. Some of them are funny too, and I can yeah. understand how people would would feel or think that way. Right, you know. So, like, yeah, even when I was a Christian, I would probably <laughs> still post a lot of these same memes because I do find, even when I was a Christian, I found a lot of things about Christianity to be kind of ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And not only that, like when you were describing earlier about those Christian people you know who were attacking that Christian singer, yeah, even back when I was a Christian, I would also think that those people are being ridiculous. Right. You know, so... Um, no, the, dude, so, there's so many times like I'm I'm sorry for cutting you off, but there, there's so many times like on 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 Facebook where you see somebody who professes to be Christian and everything that they're saying is is the exact opposite of what a Christian would be like. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you're doing it wrong. You're you're making, <laughs> us, you're making us all look bad. You know what I mean? Yeah, but see, this is the problem that I I feel about how do I put this? When an individual buys into a larger dogma or a, a larger institution uh -huh. is exactly what you're saying because you're saying they're making the real Christianity look bad. 
And from right. their their interpretation, they're thinking that she's making Christianity look bad, or you're making it look bad by defending her. And you uh-huh. have this constant bickering back and forth, and both parties feel like they're in the right. Um, mm-hmm. But ultimately, it's like this is an additional layer of conflict that's right. brought brought into the world. I feel like unnecessarily so, because I'll put it this way: life is inherently rough and tough and complicated and heartbreaking Mm -hmm. on so many levels for basically everybody right so as hard as life is why do we insist on making life even harder right and when i look at a lot of religion it's making life harder and i if if people don't agree with what i'm saying that's fine but this is also what i've realized for myself and it's Mm -hmm. like night and day for me my life with religion and my life without, mm-hmm. you know? And my life runs so much more smoothly since I left the church. Right. You see, because I look at things rationally, I, I break things down, and I'm like, oh, is this working for me or is this not? You know, do I want to do this? Do I not want to do this? I'm not even going to say, is this good or bad? Because I don't really think, in large part, there is a such thing as good and bad. It's so subjective because... Like the example you're you're giving about the people getting on the case of the Christian singer, they're mm-hmm. saying that's bad. You're saying it's fine what she's doing. So who's to say who's right or wrong in, in those scenarios? That's what I mean by it's subjective, you know? And the solution, as I see it, is to take a step back and be like, okay, well, this is just what I think about it. All right, yeah, take I mean, it, the 10,000 the, the 10, foot view, sometimes you need that to be able to discern what the actual truth is. It's just the same like, you know, some people have a disagreement. You hear one side, you hear the other side. There's some truth in between there that you don't see. You know what I mean? And you have to figure out what that truth is based upon this side or that side. It's, I mean, the the amount of information that that flows in regardless, uh, on every single subject, you know what I mean, Mm -hmm. is is sometimes so overwhelming that you're like, well, you know what? I, I, I just will not have an opinion on that or, or I will. And this is my opinion, take it or leave it. And it, you know, if you like it, great. If you don't, oh, well, you know, you, you can't get bent out of shape when people don't like or agree with what you, you feel. And, right. you know, and, and, and sometimes people are just like, well, no, no, no. According to the, the Bible, it's this. And I'm like, you're you're being too legalistic and you're making judgments upon people and you're making that you're driving them away rather than sh- you know pointing at the cross and and letting Jesus do the work and letting the Holy Spirit do the work you know what I mean you're 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 blowing it for everybody else because right. you know and and I I feel like a lot of churches and a lot of Christians do this they they say you know oh you know the way that you're living is is wrong mm-hmm. like yeah well you know it, it, it's wrong in your framework and what you know is right and wrong but right. in their world it's it's their everyday life and so yeah. you're you're condemning them for how they live it's right. not your job to change people it's it's you know right. your job is to point at the cross and get out of the way right dude i i agree with you and i wish <laughs> you'll see in a the youtube series i'm starting that i'll i'll be posting i'm gonna uh-huh. post the first one actually tomorrow mm-hmm. um one of the, the points I make in one of the videos is I wish people would do, religious people would do exactly what you just described, mm-hmm. which is like step off, shut up about something, and let God do it or let God deal with it. Or you say, look, the Holy Spirit work or however you want to phrase it. Right. Let that happen because in my view, basically nothing will really happen. Just life will happen. So, uh-huh. for, for example, look at the Muslim terrorist kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. If, if if they would each say, well, instead of me strapping a bomb to myself and blowing up innocent civilians, mm-hmm. instead of instead of me doing all of that hard work or however you want to call it, why don't they just unstrap the bombs and 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 just be like, you know what, let's let's let God Himself handle this. Let's let God destroy the infidels. Why why are we humans destroying other people? Like, let's just take a step back and let God destroy them. And you know what'll yeah. happen? They won't be destroyed because God won't do anything because I believe he doesn't exist, but, or if he does exist, he doesn't interact in the world in that way. So you understand what I'm saying though? It's like, 
if all of the religious people in the world yeah, well, st- stop taking it upon themselves to do shit. To be, to be soldiers we, for God, you mean? Yeah, like forget about the wars, forget about the terrorist attacks, forget about all these suicide bombings. Like that would just go away mm-hmm. because they would be like, oh, well, God will, God will do it. And they would sit there and wait. And you know what? Nothing would happen. God wouldn't do shit. <laughs> wow, dude. I, I, get, I get a little confused sometimes when you say, well, God doesn't exist. Or maybe he does. You know, so I'm like, I'm trying well, to... I I'm just, trying to I yeah. just proffered two options, right? All right? So none of this proves a God or not, proves that there isn't a God, none of that. Not so. But what I just said was two things. One is either there is no God, mm-hmm. or maybe there's a God exists, but a God he doesn't, he doesn't yeah. interact. Yeah, like what I'm saying is, for example, uh, let's say the terrorists have a, a plan, uh, uh, you know, they want to do this fatwa or whatever, like the uh, uh, jihad. And they want to go blow up this town of, uh, or do a terrorist attack in Paris or something, right? Mm-hmm. So they want to kill a thousand people, right? Right. So they do all the planning. They're doing this all in the name of God, right? Right. Because they feel like they're called by God, by their religion to do this. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is, if they just stop planning it and stop doing shit, guess what? Those people in Paris are going to continue to live their life and not be blown up. Because God himself from the sky is not going to strike down lightning and kill all these people on his own. Right. That's, what, this, that's it, what I'm saying. Yeah, I got So in, in a sense, God's not going to do shit about blowing up these people in Paris. This is all humans doing. Yeah. This is all religious humans. He, humans are sick, man. There's, there's yeah. the, the amount of evil that's in the world is, is mind boggling. Like I remember like a, there was like a covered video on Facebook one time and you know, of course, it's it's like that that whole paint analogy that you had for uh, what's his name, Carlin. Oh yeah, right. You know, yeah. it says this this video is graphic. You know, do you want to uncover it? I'm like, oh, well, I kind of I kind of want I kind of want to uncover it. So I uncovered it, right? And and uh, it was uh, essentially like uh, some Muslims um, who had captured some guy. I'm not quite sure if he was Christian. I'm not quite sure what he was. Maybe he was a different sect of Muslim who didn't believe the same way that they did he wasn't like isis or or whatever and they had him bound on the ankles and uh, by his hands and this thing it's still like it's fried in my brain i wish i never uncovered the video but uh essentially um they have a tank and they run him over and he can't get away because he's bound you know he's hopping away and then the next thing you know you just see him smushed by a tank it's 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 disgusting it's that's, disgusting. Yeah, that's terrible. Yeah, and and it came out like kind of around Wait, the same the, time. Wait, these terrorists? But, these terrorists did that? Yeah, and it was it came out around the same time. You know when ISIS was like you know cutting people's heads off and all that other stuff. Uh-huh. And you know there's there's a bunch of people that think though although all those videos are fake, you know like CNN had created those. There's like a whole conspiracy theory about it. And wow. All and I'm just like, uh, I don't think that that's true i think that this kind of stuff actually happens you know like putting yeah. people in a cage and drowning them in a swimming pool that kind of stuff has happened yeah. they had they had you know uh like some sort of like uh like plaza where they had crucified a bunch of people in in, in iraq and in syria and so like that kind of stuff really happens you know what i mean it's yeah. it because people are sick and right. you know and it's just pure evil and my yeah. whole thing is like if i ever was a part of something that that was doing that how could i live with myself you know what i mean well the history of christianity did that oh yeah it's bad no it's bad like you know the crusades like to me it was bad you know like why why would you in the name of god do these sorts of things right and you know uh it it, it's just you know and, and then you have the whole holocaust that's just an, a whole nother thing, you know what I mean? And it's just, there's sick portions of the world, there's evil in the world, and, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, these people have a choice. They can choose to do good, or they right. can choose to do bad things. Yeah. And from your standpoint, you're saying, oh, well, that's not a God or a devil thing, that's just a, hey, don't don't be a jerk, be be good to your fellow man, human, human. that's humanist, right? And so... Yeah, you know, like uh, the meme I posted where uh, Moses is coming down the mountain and he's holding the two tablets. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And the one tablet, one. the one tablet says, "Be cool." 
Uh-huh. And the other and one the, says, yeah. don't be an asshole. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that's basically what I'm talking about. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, because we, we ultimately all have that choice. But from from my view standpoint, or my standpoint, it's, it's like a, uh, I just say, okay, well, you know, choosing what's moral is choosing the godly way. That's the only difference, really, in in the the argument. You know, is I have God attached to the good, and mm-hmm. I have Satan attached to the bad, right? So, um, it it's just, I guess, a framework, uh, from a a mental standpoint. You know, I I also like I I've been thinking about like you know where you're where you're at, like you know I I, I it's it's interesting to me because I don't I don't really know too many people that are where you are. Like my buddy Ruben, you probably. You you probably yeah. could have some conversations with him too because uh, I feel like where is he at now? There's like in terms uh, of spiritual. Uh, you know I I don't want to even talk about. it. I think that's something you you should talk to him on a private level. I don't want to put yeah. it in public. You know what I mean? Sure. But um, but in all honesty, like uh, he um, what was I going with that? What were we talking about right before that? Well, morality and religion. And uh, right. And oh yeah, 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 yeah. What I was saying w- with where you're at, right, yeah. um, is I think of what you're doing as kind of like its own religion. You know what I mean? It's it's it's. Well, it's that's why of... I kind of like that Confucianity sounds like a religion. <laughs> right. I like and, it. Well, I mean, that, it, that is it, my religious views on Facebook, by the way, Confucianity. <laughs> okay. No, but like I just listen. Just hear me out, real quick. All right. Okay. So. So I go to this church, right? It's a community of people that believe a certain way, right? Right, right. And you have, uh, was it de- deconverted or whatever? Is that what it's called? Deconversion? You have deconverted, and now you are surrounding yourselves with a community of people that believe similarly to you. So in a mm, way... Not really. Though. Yes and no. Okay. So, for example, you and I still are friends, and we talk all the time. That's because we're real. That's that's different, dude. No, but it's not. The thing is, I will talk with anybody Mm -hmm. very openly about anything. Right. So you're making it sound like I sequester myself to a echo chamber where I just surround myself with atheists and that's it, which is not the case at all. I surround myself with positive people, Uh entrepreneurial people, creative people energetic, funny, interesting, smart people, deep thinkers. Like I could go on a, like active, physically fit, um, non-social justice warrior kind of people. Right. Uh, these are the kind of people who I regularly associate with because yeah, like a lot of our values will align, but it's a broad range just because somebody's Christian like yourself, like that doesn't hold them out of people that I would associate with. Right. So, but what you're describing happens a lot in our society right now. And well, I'm not I mean, a, I'm that, not I look at I look at no, I look at atheism as as a, its own religion. Like that's what's so funny about it to me. Like I, you well, know, we we have we have a friend from our past who who is, you know, is openly atheist, you know, and uh, he, he used to post but he doesn't do it so much now. He he used to post um, you know, atheist beliefs. And, you know, at some point I was just like, yeah, but the, it was all about proof and all this other stuff. And I was like, but there's, you know, how can you prove that there, there's a God? I'm like, how can you prove that there isn't? And there's like right. lack of evidence. And I'm like, there's lack of evidence that he doesn't exist either. You know what right. I mean? So, uh, yeah, or that he does exist. Does it, does, does, does uh, every single argument that an atheist has, there's, uh, there's always a counter argument. And every argument that a Christian has, there's a counter argument. You see well, what I'm saying? For, so, yeah, for the same reason that I'm like, hey, I don't believe in Santa Claus. And then you're like, well, can you prove Santa doesn't exist? And I'm like, no, I can't prove Santa doesn't exist. Uh, that's kind of a stretch. No, but it's, <laughs> the same, it's the same logic, though. Because you're putting the onus on atheists to prove that God doesn't exist, and you're saying they can't do it, just the same way I'm saying I can't prove that Santa doesn't exist. No, what I'm saying is they're asking me to prove that he does exist. And I'm right. like, yeah, so, so throw it back on you. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, to me, it's the same argument. Like, you can't prove that he does, doesn't exist. I can't prove physically that he does, right? But I can, yeah, I I can only atheists, speak from my atheists, experiences. Atheists, and that's atheists would argue if you're going to claim 
uh, a positive. If you're going to claim something exists, you have to prove that it exists. You don't have to prove that something doesn't exist. Like the burden of proof is on the one making the statement that something exists. So for example, do unicorns exist? The default state would be to believe that no, unicorns do not exist until they're proven to exist, right? Right, but there's fallacy. So, there's fallacy in that argument because why? you don't you don't know if they exist or not. You just based upon your experience, right. based upon all the information and science and experience that we have, I do not believe that unicorns exist. Right. Well, it's funny that we're having this debate because I don't even identify as an atheist, which you know I mentioned that in my um, the first episode. Right. So I'm an agnostic. Uh, specifically for this reason, because I don't, sometimes I do get bothered by really aggressive atheists, right? because it is kind of like a religion in the sense they start making claims Mm -hmm. about things that are not scientifically proven or we haven't figured out yet in science, right? Right. So that does bother me. That's why I'm agnostic because I'm just like, "Mm, it's kind of above my pay grade. I don't know what the end of the universe looks like. I don't. Mm-hmm. And we have some understanding of the universe and our galaxy. Uh, there's all these scientific theories, and I find it interesting. But we don't know everything. So right. I, I err on the side of there are I, limits to human understanding. So I don't know, is what you're saying. Yeah, that's know. why I'm agnostic. Right. Because I, I find it agnosticism to be the most humble and also intellectually honest position to take. Right. Because it says there are things we do know. But there are also things we don't know. Right. And I, I'm comfortable in that uh, because that's honest. Right. And it's not overstepping the bounds of my knowledge or our knowledge collectively as a species. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, you know, that. that's that, that's me in defense of agnosticism, but I, I get it on both sides. So, like, I yeah, well, that, that's by... the thing. That's the thing I love about you is like you understand both sides. You know yeah. what I mean? And so and it's kind of like when, when you and I always talk like uh, uh, politics, right? You and I are both very, very in the middle, you know, and we, we have what we believe and we have, you know, we can use our logic in our minds and we can say, okay, you know what? Because I, I think about things and I'm not willing just to jump on the bandwagon because you're right or you're left. Right. Um, I can I can make an informed decision based upon the facts that have been presented in front of me, and that right. that is the way that you are looking at religion too. Okay. Yeah. And and I I have had issues with some parts of uh, Christianity about uh, you know the Bible about, about all kinds of things. Like I took a creation class. Did I tell you, I told you that right? And I was having uh, issues dealing with the young Earth. Because cause yeah. everything I had learned up to that point was scientific that Earth is billions upon billions of years old, right? And right. so I'm like, if if you know God created everything and you're saying that was that happened six thousand years ago, I'm having a hard time believing that. And right. then you know I'm I'm sitting here and you're telling me how many light years are these stars away, and how many years would it take for for us to get to them? And, you know, and, and, you know, they, they came back with the, oh, there's a, there's a thing called stretching and there's a, oh, whatever. And I, I'm just like, look, man, the universe was created a long, 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 long time ago. It was longer than six, 7,000 years ago. Okay. Yeah. Um, when God decided to put people on the earth, they're, they're, they're talking, is it like days or is it like a millennia, you know, a day in God's eyes, all that other thing, you know? And, and so you know, the whole thing is God is outside of time. So God can just say, okay, you know what? I'm gonna put them here. It was the first day, but you don't know that. You know what I mean? You don't know when the first day was. So it, it, it just, it's just, it's just mind boggling. Right. And, and, you know, I was like, well, how do you reconcile dinosaur bones? You know, how do you reconcile, you know, Australia, you know, why, if, if there was this, this, uh, this land bridge all the way to Australia, how can you explain what a kangaroo is, right? Why aren't there any kangaroo uh, fossils found between uh, where the ark landed, right? And <laughs> and Australia, the they ark. Had, the yeah. ark is just ridiculous, but yeah, no. Well, I'm I'm just saying, like you know, yeah. they they would have had to have hopped to Australia if there was a land bridge there, if there was Pangaea. That you know what I'm saying? There, right. there's you know, I believe in microevolution. I don't believe in, you know, macroevolution. So it, it's kind of a, a thing. So I'm just trying to figure, figure it all out. 
And like I said, I haven't completely formulated all my opinions on a lot of things, but at the same time, you know, I'm trying to, to reconcile it in my mind. And so, you know, it's, it's an ongoing process. It's not like, you know, I don't have all the answers and some people, you know, they, when they get into these, these types of discussions, they want to, they want to be right. Right. They want to be right. And I'm like, it's okay not to have the answer, man. Right. You don't have, yeah. you don't have to have everything, you know, sewn up and, 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 and collared up to the top with the, with the tie and all that. You don't have to be pressed like that. You right. know, just be honest about it. But like, you know what? I don't know. Let's, let's right. see if we can research it a little bit and figure it out. You know, if, if we see something interesting on that topic, let's look at it and we'll both discuss it, you know? You know, this is, this is an interesting metaphor because I, I just thought of this off the top of my head, but mm-hmm. I'm sure they've changed this the way they do test taking nowadays. But do you remember, I think it was, yeah, it was the SATs mm-hmm. where if you answer a question correctly, you get points, right? Right. If you answer it incorrectly, you get penalized points, right? Okay. But if you leave it blank, you don't get penalized, right? Huh. But you so don't it, get the points. Yeah, you don't get the positive points, but it still benefits you to not just be insistent that your wrong answers are right, right right so then you only mark down the answers that you're basically positive that you're right 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 i just thought i of see that where you're going with that yeah, yeah. yeah i just thought of that as a metaphor for the way everybody acts nowadays so everybody acts nowadays like you're not allowed to leave a question blank right you know you it's 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 true or false it's very binary right like black and white you're, you're, man everything's yeah, black, black and white, and white. You're, either, you're either red or uh Red or blue, right or left, um, mm-hmm. you know, pro-choice, pro-life. You're like you're, always, it, and it's a shame because agnostics get a really bad rap. But I think this is essentially like taking the SATs. Mm-hmm. You know, like there are things I know, and I will mark those answers that I believe this is truth. And right. there are other things that I don't know. And on the things where I don't know, I just won't mark a circle on on that question. Um, yeah. I actually or heard I'll, a good, or I'll, a, good or a good word. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Or I'll just say like, or I'll try to do more research uh, about something if it's important to me to be able to come to a better conclusion about marking it. Okay, I do believe this is the correct answer. Right. You know. Yeah. Sometimes, but I, I, but I can't I do that, that about point, I'm like, I don't even feel like having this argument. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like exactly. There's a limit in terms of hours in a day and resources and time. It's like I'm not going to research everything about everything because. Right. You know, it's just yeah. there's not, not no time for it, dude. To 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 piggyback on what you just said, like I heard a, a good phrase that that kind of sews that up, right? It, it's you know what you know, you know what you don't know, but you don't know what you don't know, right? Yeah. I, I love that. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 a it's a great phrase, yeah. and uh, like uh, it's it's the truth, man. You that's know, it, I should uh, jot that down and make a graphic out of it. Is that's basically agnosticism, right? You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. So, it, it, oh yeah, this is what I was going to say earlier. It's funny because, in a sense, when it comes to identif- uh, how you identify spiritually, mm-hmm. I look at it as a spectrum. So on the on the one end of the spectrum is let's just say, you could say Christian, but let's just call it like highly religious, right? Okay. And on the other end of the spectrum is like just absolute atheist. Right. Mm, there's no right. God. There's no spirits. There's no nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, and agnosticism, you could argue, is kind of in the middle. Right. Uh, and it, it's funny because I, I would almost describe you as an agnostic Christian and I'm an agnostic atheist. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go that far, dude. Like I'm on this side of the spectrum. You're on this side of the spectrum. But we're both reasonable and willing right. to admit no, I mean... there's things we could be wrong about and things we don't know. Right, but like the the uh, the legalistic Christian would say that I, I am not helping the kingdom, right? Because I have questions, and I I'm still trying to trying to figure out like you know, um, I you know there's doubts yeah, in but, your mind because but, you you grew up a certain way, and there's logic and there's there's reason, and you're trying to figure it out, and then sometimes you, sometimes you you have to just say you know what I'll just take it on faith. You have to. You know what I mean? Well, because, yeah, I mean, it, but you you wouldn't. You would go the other way. You know what I'm saying? So it it for well, for I, me, I I think like when I go back to my point about uh, there's only so many th- hours in a day, right? So right. It's, it's a certain point you just got to be like, all right, fine, I I don't even care, right? Uh-huh. Like, let's look at ab- abortion for example, right? Whatever my views are on it, it doesn't really matter to me personally because I'm not aborting a baby. 
Like I'm not marrying somebody. I'm not going to, you know what I mean? I'm not a woman who's going to abort a baby. So, or, or gay marriage, for example, right? Uh-huh. Like yeah. I can have, I can have views about it, but it, none of these things actually personally affect me. Right. Right. So it's very easy for me to just step away and just let everybody argue about it. And I'm just going to go live my life. Like I'm going to make art and uh, work out and, uh, you know, have, have a living and just enjoy my life. Right. So you see what I'm saying? Like, I don't have to get involved with any of these issues. Right. Um, so, cause I got enough shit to deal with in my own life. Right. Know? Well, and some people would say that you don't, you don't have a right to an opinion because you're not a woman. You can't, you can't, you know, talk about what you would do in this situation. Like, right. but, but at the same time, if you were married and your, your wife was pregnant or if you, if you're not married and you got a girl pregnant, then you would be involved in that decision. Right. I, I, that's, that's, but until saying, that happens. So it's, it's a, right. It's a, but they would a, say that you don't have a right in that decision. Like oh yeah, ch- I, I know. Yeah. I know they'll say that. Yeah, I yeah, know. yeah. And so my whole thing is like, well, uh, kind of. It takes two to tango. So you know right. what I mean. It, it, and and my whole thing is, yeah, it's the woman's body, and ultimately it is her choice. But at the same time, to say that the man has no input, I think that's that's not legit. You know what yeah. I mean? And and some people are like, well, you you don't have a right to tell me because you're a man. And I'm like, right. well, I do have a right to tell you because I'm entitled to my opinion because I'm a human. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, so I don't want to go off on that issue too deeply, but I will say this. It's like yeah. it's it goes back to what we were just talking about though, about people look at it as a black and white, right? It's it's either the woman's choice completely and the man has nothing to do with it or right. the man can say stuff and the woman has to obey to the man's rules. Like who why, why do we have to live in a world where it's this or that? Right. You know. So whether it's abortion or whether it's any other issue. Right. This is the problem with our country, our society, with politics, with everything. Is that, and that's also one of the reasons why I, I like doing Confucianity is because I actually want to engage with people of all different belief systems, like what we're doing right now. We're having a dialogue about it. You know, right. it's right. non non judgmental. We can both walk away from this feeling like you believe what you believe still, mm-hmm. and I believe what I believe, and. We enjoyed the conversation. Maybe I, I learned more about you, at least as a person and your experiences. And you've right. gained more insight into how I think and who I am as well. And that's that's a that's a win win, you know. Right. So, I mean, but but here's the thing, like, you know, if Christianity is right and and you choose not to, that's that's the big that's the big hard part for me. You know, you're my friend. Because right? you don't want to see me burning in hell for eternity. Pretty much. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of a thing, right? So, you know, and, and like a part of me wants to be like, no, dude, no. But at the same time, I'm not, I, I'm not that guy to tell you what you can and can't believe. You know what I mean? I just know what I believe. And, you know, the hope is maybe you could, some, something I would say would rub off on you to give you some thought to say, Hey, maybe I should investigate that, you know, but I can't, I can't, I can't bring myself to say, you're you're going to hell, dude. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've I've obviously dealt with this a right. lot a lot in my early 30s, especially because mm-hmm. coming out of religion is terrifying. Because mm-hmm. when you believe for your whole life that you're going to heaven, mm-hmm. and all these other people are going to hell, right? And now all of a sudden you're one of these other people. Mm-hmm. That is a serious head fuck to wrap your head around. Like just, right. holy shit, what? Mm-hmm. Um, so that was really, that was a big component of me leaving religion, the struggle of leaving religion, which I didn't really get into in the first podcast episode, but it's tough. It, it's tough because of course I was afraid of going to hell and burning in hell for eternity and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But I feel like I've given it so much more exploration since then, historically looking into the scripture, looking into the translations, looking into how the Bible came to be the Bible um, evaluating the universe and science and, and human nature and all these things. And now it's like 10 years later Mm -hmm. and I'm like, wow, I I don't know how to convey it to you, how clear it is to me that there is no hell, that it's all man-made and you can look at it historically. It has been made up to control people and to rule people's lives with fear and also rule over the, the, the poor masses because, you know, like back in serfdom and in the Middle Ages and all that, when religion was sprouting up, 
these people had shitty lives. Right. You know? And you, you give them a message of hope where, oh, don't worry about it in your next life. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be golden. It's going to be great. Like, you know, pearly gates, heaven. Um, mm -hmm. In the meantime, you need, to, you need to uh, pay what little money you have uh, in tithing to the church and, uh, you know, do these things and, you know, make sure you obey these rules and uh, all these kind of, you know, it's control. Mm -hmm. So when you look, when you do the research and you look historically at the evolution of religion over thousands of years, mm -hmm. it's become so clear to me that the concept of hell, it doesn't even make sense. Like on any level, any way I look at it. So, I mean, there, besides, there's, besides there's the fact there's not even much, there's not even much scriptural basis for it. If you actually go looking at scripture for it, there's really not. Mm -hmm. um, in the Old Testament, they don't talk about hell at all. So I'm like, if God is the one speaking to mankind, like people discount the Old Testament way too easily. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they kind of say like, oh, well, you know, that, that, that was... That was the like Old Testament, whatever. That was like we got we got Jesus over here. Let's let's look over here. Right. But I'm like, dude, how can anybody discount the Old Testament when it's God Himself speaking, speaking? I mean, plus you've got the prophets, but God Himself, God the Father, mm -hmm. speaking to humanity, right? right, directly and saying all the things that He said, and then also what the prophets said that you know through Him. People discount that, but I'm like, no, I think <laughs> if I'm going to believe in a religion and I mm -hmm. want to know the true God, I'm going to look at every word that God himself said. Right. And I'm that's like, why, that's he, why the Old you look Testament, in the Old Testament still Testament, part he of the Bible. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah, but people that, discount it. The, but old, I'm like, the Old Testament is the Torah. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Yeah, but he doesn't, he doesn't talk about hell. Mm. So... When you think about the New Testament and when you look, I just was, uh, I, I don't know if I sent you the video, but it was, uh, I saw this historical video on uh, the book of John and how it was different than the other three Gospels. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the tonality of it and the claims that were made, it's markedly, noticeably different than the other three Gospels. Is, um, is that the one where, where it's like, uh, uh, what, John's the favorite? No, the, the favorite yeah, I apostle think, or whatever. Yeah, I think that is written in that in the book of John. Yeah, but no, no, I'm um, saying like your your video that you had shared with me. I think that I think that was part of the big title, like the myth of you know. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I, I forget the title, but it was like the fourth gospel or like the whatever. Yeah, essentially that it, his ministry and and the other other two was like a year, and and then in his it's three or something. like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So, but the thing is when I. When I see all this and I hear all this, I'm like, uh, I, I told you, logically speaking, why it would make sense to introduce concepts of hell, even post-scripturally, mm -hmm. like even after the Bible's assembly, assembled, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, why do the Catholic Church, you know, you know, you, just, you know, it just used to be the church, right? There wasn't mm -hmm. Catholic, it was just the church. Yeah, yeah. Until the Protestant Reformation. So then there was like the Catholic and the Protestant thing, but... Yeah. Um, so when it was just the church, why is there so much emphasis on the hell? And then you're like, oh, yeah, they were charging people money to save the souls of their loved ones who died or to save their own souls. Mm -hmm. So when you start thinking about it, it's kind of like now when you're investigating corporate malfeasance and all this stuff, it's like, what, what do you do? You follow the money. Right. If you want, if you want to get at the truth, you follow the money. Yeah, so if, that's the, if, that, if that's the origin story of sin and hell and all of this, mm -hmm. you know, for me, it's become so clear that this is just a control mechanism and it's worked brilliantly for thousands of years and people still buy into it because it's, this is the thing about Christianity and all these religions and all these cults as well. It's kind of genius. Like it's really smart and effective at manipulating people because let's face it you look at reality people are going to be poor people are going to be hungry people are going to be sick people are going to be lonely people are going to have rejection failure um you know people are going to have parents who don't love them uh people are going to be abused are going to be bullied i can go on and on and on and on and on for right. like tw 20 minutes on all the ways that people's lives are going to be fucked up right, right. so when you are brought to a church 
and you hear this message of like, oh, wait a minute. There's a God out there who created me and he loves me in ways that nobody else will ever love me. And I'll always have him to rely on. And all I have to do is believe that his son died for me. That's awesome. And like I could sing these songs and feel all emotional, like Jesus loves me, this I know, you know, and this feels great. And I have a community and people will welcome me in and smile and look at me in the eye and shake my hand and we can go have brunch together and, you know, listen to each other's problems and pray for each other and believe that this God is going to solve our prayer problems. All of that, that's a that's a tantalizing offer on the table for people. That's why pe- people go for it. Yeah. Yeah. But Th- what I'm saying is... That doesn't, that doesn't, that make, doesn't, that doesn't th- make it 100% right or wrong. Right. That doesn't make it real by any means. Like well, it, the God of the... But that was my point in the other video. Uh, the power of beliefs uh-huh. is really what matters. It doesn't matter what you believe. People can believe in a lie, but if that lie works for them... Well, it depends. Like it, if, it, if served, it, it served its it, purpose. Right, but if it impedes on other people, then maybe not, right? Well, religion has impeded on other people for pretty much ever. Mm. What, what, what about gay, gay rights? What about, you know, minorities and slavery? And, you know, it's like it has impeded on other people's rights. And I would argue they're doing it wrong. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like we could both agree that the Westboro Baptist Church is wrong, right? We can't. Yeah. They're out of right. their minds, and 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 so it's just one of those things, man. Where you know, to to find the right level of, look, this is who Jesus is. He loves you, right? And the problem is, you get the legalistic folks that will just condemn you for for living the way that you have always lived, you know. And that's that to me is not showing love and compassion. For your fellow man you know what i mean so that that's a big component for me like that's a, a a big gauge for me on whether or not an argument is 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 right or wrong okay like if somebody out there is is living what according to the bible is wrong and all these people are are chastising them and, and condemning them and and you know essentially judging them then I'm like, well, and I always go back to it. Judgment is not ours. Why are you guys doing this? You know, and their whole thing is like, we're trying to protect the faith. We're trying to, you know, this person is. Because a, God really needs them to protect it for him or else it'll all fall to pieces. Because well, God, the, the God of the universe isn't strong enough to hold true religion together, is he? It's it's the whole kingdom, kingdom focus thing. You know what I mean? It's like you're. That that type of person is going to infect the mind of somebody else. That that in your job is to protect. The, I know, but but yeah, you see the I, I, but you no, see that I get you. Yeah, it's like me. they're defending a house of cards. Mm-hmm. If it's a true religion, the power of the you know the ultimate omnipotent omniscient God, why are they so worried that people are going to leave the faith because of what one girl sings a song about? Like, really, is that your, is your faith that weak in the God of the universe? Yeah, I don't know. Like, like I was when I was watching those guys, I was just like, "Why are they this way?" You know, they're like, "We got to be on guard." She's a fraud, and and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, I don't, I, I don't feel like she is. Oh, and people are treating her like an idol. She's, she's your Christian idol, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, well, she was on American Idol, but it's kind of a joke in my mind, right? And then, <laughs> but, but at the same time, I, I look at it and I'm just like, no, dude. Like, listen to her music. It all points to God. Like how, how can, because she doesn't say the name of Jesus is is the whole thing that they're all about. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and then in this other interview, my wife, you know, showed me, she was like, yeah, you know, she's talking about God. She straight up says, you know, Jesus is my savior. And and I'm just like, okay, well, you know, that's all I needed to hear. You know what I mean? I'm like, I don't need, uh, uh, her to, to publicly confess to every single person. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't need that. Um, you, you know, know, you know what I, you know what I look at it as. It's like the liberal left. Mm-hmm. The 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 dangers of the liberal left is they're they're all turning on each other. Mm-hmm. So like I saw this one video where you know it's a bunch of angry college students. You know, campus. They're all like protesting something something or another. And they were you know they're talking about racism. They're talking about sexism. They're talking about transphobia. All these kind of things. And they're and then this white woman is 
so somebody else comes and all these liberal, uh, radical leftists, whatever, are starting to gang up on this other conservative guy who showed up and whatever. Mm-hmm. And then this white woman is starting to say some shit. And then this black lady turns and is yelling at the white woman. And she's like, you're not allowed to say shit about this white woman, you know? Hmm. So hmm. what I mean when the left liberal, like it's identity politics, essentially. All so right. like they don't see it at all. But what I'm describing is already happening and it's only going to get worse and worse because it's almost like a race to the bottom. It's right. like, who's, who's more oppressed? Who's the bigger victim? Right. Because if you're the bigger victim, then you get to say shit. And if you're entitled or privileged in some way, like either you're white or you're a male or whatever it is, or you're, you're, so your socioeconomic class is higher, then you've you got to keep your mouth shut because you don't, you don't, you're not entitled to the right to say shit. Right? Uh-huh. All right. So the same way I say they are eating each other alive, and that is a, it's a sad ridiculous affair that is playing out. Right. I would say the same thing about a lot of this Christian community that you're talking about, where I'm like, they're doing the same thing. They're like, well, she's not righteous enough, or she's not saying the right words often enough, or she's not tithing enough, or she's being too commercially successful. And and either way, you look at it in the Christian camps or the leftist liberal, it's, it's kind of disgusting. Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, but it's, it's human nature. Like, my, like no, uh, one of, why, one of why, my f- favorite lines nature? from like a like, hip hop album. You, no, you, you, like, you and I are humans and we're not doing that. Right. So no, it's but not just, it's nature though. Like uh, one of the, like I used to like in college, like a uh, KRS one, right. And in one of the, the albums, he has a line that he, that it's like crabs in a pot, right. When one reaches the top, another one reaches up and pulls him back down into the pot yeah you know and and the whole thing here is like you know he was about to get freedom he was about to escape and this other crab pulled him back into yeah i get you it know? so so it, it it's it's like that and and you know it's there's jealousy there's all kinds yeah. of things that keep people you know in in this sort of thing and you know i i i'm still like in my mind you know because it, it's brand new news to me like i guess my wife said something about it about a month ago but at the same time like i watched a ton of videos about you know these people condemning her last night and i'm just like i'm like man in all honesty i i look at it and i'm just like you guys are just being way too legalistic you know what i mean like she's not trying to 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 deny god's existence and you guys are treating her like she is right you know and you're you're hurting her her opportunity to to actually witness into the world, and you guys but, need to back off, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. like let her let let her like, right. let her prove you wrong before like, you you condemn. I, it's just crazy. I will say this: I agree with you that a, when we say human nature, uh-huh. a lot of people operate the way the l- extreme leftists are doing, or like the Christian judgmental people are doing. Right. Um, you, I guess you could say that's the majority. Or maybe that's just the more vocal, outspoken majority. Who can say for sure? But one of the things that bothers me about Christianity is is when statements are just thrown out there, like "we're all sinful," and "we're all that," "we're all like that," and it's all human nature. And I'm like, I for one, I'm like, no, I'm not like that. I don't give a fuck what that girl is saying or not saying about her spirituality or Jesus or not. I don't give a fuck. She, she can say whatever she wants, like live her life, make her money, do her business, whatever. I don't give a shit. So, and that's generally how I am about everybody. I'm like, as long as you're not, you know, raping and murdering people and, you know, physically harming other people, mm-hmm. I'm all for individuality and like capitalism and just like you do you, you know, you be yourself mm-hmm. if we really live in a free society. So that's how I operate. Now, uh-huh. how, when people say it's a human nature to be gossipy or to, to be like the crab metaphor, or like pulling other people down with me. I'm like, I, I don't feel that way, you know? Right. I mean, but that's that's just like like you said to me before. That's how you frame your world. You know what I mean? That's how you look at things. That's how you act, you know? Right. And it's it's a choice. It, ultimately, it's a choice, right? Right. And so you sit there and, and not you specifically, but people sit there and, yeah. and a majority of you know the high school politics that you will see, the clickiness, the, the whatever 
it, it is, it happens with every single human being. Like you, you tend to you tend to group with people that you know are only believe the way yeah. that you do. Yeah, birds of a feather of flock together. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Sure. And so you know, it, it's like one of those things where you know, I I look at my high school days and I hung out with the rockers, the smokers that were hanging out at the corner. I hung out with the preps. I hung out with the jocks. I was a jock. You know, I was a prep. I was a yo boy. I I was all different kinds of things. You know, I was because. I didn't I didn't just say, "Hey, you don't believe the way that I believe, so I'm not going to hang out with you." I said, "You don't believe the way that I believe. I want to know why you believe the way you believe. I want to hang out with you, get to know you so that I understand it." Yeah. So, I mean, there there's But there's, that's cool. There, and that's probably yeah. why we one of the reasons why we get along and continue to get along. Right. But I mean, yeah. it's it's but a majority of people don't think that way. Right. They they just group together and because there's safety in numbers, right? Right. And yeah. and so you know I'm not going to put myself out there. You know I was always considered extroverted, and it's funny because like you know you always say oh well you're so extroverted, and like now I feel like as I'm getting older <laughs> I'm quite the opposite. You know All like right. and and I feel like you're you're becoming more extroverted, no, which is weird. No, I I realized recently like. Especially with this last dating relationship I just got out of, I, uh, I'm, I'm really, I am introverted. Yeah, like I'm, I'm a sociable guy, but right. The th- I don't think a lot of extroverts can say, you know what, I could live a week and a half by myself, not leave the apartment, not talk to anybody, and be totally fine. I don't think yeah. you're gonna find. I don't think you're gonna find extroverts who would say that and mean it. I think a week would be too long for me, but at the same time, <laughs> I would. I do enjoy my time alone. I know so, you do because it's in such a scarcity for you. Oh uh, yeah, that's that's probably why. Yeah, yeah. I told you about the whole the whole uh, yeah. twenty four hour philosophy, right? Oh yeah, yeah, you were here for that. Yeah, it still hasn't happened, but at the same time, <laughs> you know, I get moments like like right now, like I I gotta I gotta do some work for a client, but at the same time, like uh, uh, for the most part, my kids and my wife have left me alone in here to talk to you, so. I, I enjoy this kind of time, you know, mm-hmm. where I could just be be me, um, not not put on the dad hat, not put on the husband hat, just just right. be Brian. So, you know, but I don't know, man. I don't know what else. I, we could, I know we could talk for hours. You know what I mean about yeah, all yeah, kinds yeah. of stuff. You know, this this might not be all that there is. We yeah, we can uh, other conversations. Yeah, 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 we could do a we could do a follow up sequel, uh, another time. Yeah, yeah, but uh, so, I. One of the things I wanted to say was uh, when we were talking about hell and you're worried about me going to hell, I've reached a point in the last 10 years where it's so ridiculously small of a likelihood, like 0.0000, however many zeros percent, that there is a hell and that I'd be going there. It's this is that, what you believe. This yeah, is what you believe. It's, yeah. it's that small of a percentage that I, mm. I've reached a point where it doesn't even concern me anymore. So, right. What I've had to come to terms with now is like, I die, you die, everybody dies, and that's it. Yeah, that's what I believed in high school. Yeah. So yeah, like, that, that has been the new thing that I've had to wrestle with because based on everything I've come to learn and know in 40 years of existence, that seems by far the most likely outcome. Well, so what do you what do you think about the whole, um, you know, the near death experiences where people leave their bodies, they're floating above their bodies, their consciousness, yeah. all that kind of stuff, the light and all that right. good stuff. You know, yeah, what I'm mean? glad you, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up yeah. because even that makes sense because everybody has been talking about that for so long throughout society, right? That you're saying it's in the back of everyone's mind. Yeah, like if I were to get hit by a, a truck. And I'm in a coma, mm-hmm. and I and I see something. What do you think I'm going to see? Like literally, yeah, if I walk memories. down the street, like yeah. we just we we're just talking about this now. And if we mm-hmm. end we end the call, and I go out and I get hit by a bus, and then I'm like unconscious. What do you think I'm going to see? Probably bright lights. Probably some clouds. Mm-hmm. Probably some you know something that everybody else sees and everybody else talks about, right? All right. So does that make it real or is that just the conditioning of the mind? Right. But what about the, 
I don't think you saw this that that one video that I was or that one movie I was telling you about, like the Case for Christ. Have you seen that movie? <laughs> no. Okay, so uh, uh, essentially the 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 way they made that, a the, it was based on the book. There was the yeah. book, The Case for Christ. Yeah. Right. Right. So yes, did you read the book? Uh, I had a copy of it. I think I threw it out. Okay. Well, es- essentially, I'll just give you the 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 down and dirty plot. Right. This this guy, he's an atheist. His his wife, he believes is an atheist too. Or, uh, I guess they're both atheists. And um, she gets pregnant. Um, and she starts thinking, or she meets somebody, or I can't remember like specifically how, but all of a sudden she she's trying to get into church, right? She's getting into it, and he's very resistant against it. He doesn't want it to happen, so he's this reporter, and he says, "Well, I'm going to research the opposite, right? And I'm going to prove that God doesn't exist, so that my wife can stop this foolishness." Mm-hmm. And so he goes on this quest. He goes on this journey. He meets with all these professionals. Um, you know, medical professionals, biblical professionals. He 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 runs the gamut of people to go talk to about you know Christ and and the Bible and and um, you know medically what happens to your body when you die, all this other other kind of stuff. And in the end, obviously, well, it, it he, he he becomes a Christian. Yeah, he becomes a Christian. <laughs> so uh, there's that. Okay, so um, obviously, it's based on a true story. So this guy. He, you know and and so this is his his testimony this is his his faith journey mm-hmm. this is whatever so it is what it is all right they made a movie out of it and and, and then you know they could make a movie about me who right. goes you know, the other way re- yeah uh, yeah i got you but it is what it is but i i i would urge you just to watch it and, and we could talk about it whatever um and then there's that that other movie that i sent you a link to called the interview with god Right. And oh, it, yeah, yeah. I, it was already in my queue. I want to watch that. Yeah. And, and so in that movie, it addresses some of the questions that people have. Like if mm-hmm. you could ask God any question, what would you ask him? Right. Mm-hmm. And so so there's there's a bunch of things like that in that movie. And I think you would find it interesting, to say the least. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so like uh, I just happened upon it one day when I was surfing through Netflix. I'm like, oh, what's this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, well, they, and, they throw it up in your face. Like right when you log in, so I'm like, yeah, okay, I added it to my queue. No, so. it, they didn't. They didn't throw it in mine. I just, I was just surfing through. It. I'm like, what's this? And it, it might, it might have been like because you watched, you know, this or whatever. And I'm also watching this Morgan Freeman thing. Uh, have you seen this this thing with Morgan Freeman? Yeah, what's it called? Um, I don't know what it's called. Yeah, but, uh, my my mom was watching some episodes when I was home, and I, I watched a little bit of it. Honestly, I was kind of annoyed watching it. Yeah, I mean, there's there's parts of it where I'm just like, come on, Morgan. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just well, like, anything he says with that voice will sound very poetic and oh, beautiful. sure. But like, like I'm, but he went he went and he visited, visited some Buddhists and and I was just yeah. like, what? Are you Buddhist? Or are you Christian? What? I, you know, like we the whole time I don't know where he where he stands. So but like, I think that's the that's the point. I think he's supposed to be objective about. Gotcha. Like that that's probably the one aspect of it that I would you respect. Do like. Right. Is that he's not taking one side or another. He's just presenting all of these different belief systems around the world, which, of course, that's also. Yeah. Why do people a little bit they do? of. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like it's a little bit of what I'm doing with Confucianity, but I'm kind of going the other way with it, which is kind of more like he in that show. They're doing it more in a sense of like, look at the beauty of this religion. Look at the beauty of this religion. Look mm-hmm. at the beauty of this religion. It's, right. it's all beautiful. It's all beautiful. It's all wonderful. Right. And I'm kind of more like. Uh questioning each of those religions and being like really okay right um, but at the same time those historically have taken place you know what i mean like there was this whole village that that believed a certain way and and all of a sudden like the romans came in and obliterated them what mm-hmm. was what was their what was their end end game in their religion at that time did did that happen to them you know what i mean so it, it's it's kind of a thing so you know I'm just looking at it, but it's also interesting to see, like, you know, I guess one of the first ones was, like, um, there's a place in India uh, where they burn bodies next to this river or something. Oh, you're asking the wrong guy. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I figured worst, you're, you're worst, Indian. You might worst know. Indian ever on Twitter. I told you, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I have, remember. I have the handle, yeah. yeah. It's official. Yeah. No, but, but like, uh, I, I figured you might have, your mom might have talked to you about it, but. 
No. No, but there's like a, a, a so, uh, apparently there's like a, a city in, in India that's considered super holy, and there's like some river that's super holy too. And like when people die, they take maybe them the and they... Maybe Ganges River, maybe. Maybe. And they, they essentially burn their bodies uh, on the edge of this river. And, you know, it's like a thing. Like, yeah. like nonstop bodies are burning there. And I'm just yeah. like, that, that's just weird, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to lie. It, I was is like, it, does weird, it smell though? like barbecue? What? <laughs> it's funny or interesting to think, label one thing weird. It's weird to me. Vers- versus another thing weird. Because I'm like, really? A human being has to die in order for you to be visible to this God? He has this wrath against you where he he's demanded by some code. He is under obligation to send you to hell to burn in eternity. But un- until he sheds the blood of his own son, then it's all good and well and good. Like, that's that's not weird to you, but people burning dead bodies is weird to you. No, no. You know? No, like, that that is weird to me. Yeah. Like, the, the whole blood sacrifice of a lamb. Weird yeah. to me. Like... Uh, the the Aztecs ripping somebody's heart out, sacrifice, right. weird to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like all this ritualistic type stuff is very strange to me. And like the the idea that yeah, you know this guy, uh, God sent down his son, and he came down and he told us all about the kingdom, and then they murdered him, and they murdered him for us so that we could. It's it's weird, and you it's know bizarre. Yeah. And oh, did I, I? I think I sent you this one video too, where they talked about Rastafarianism. Was it Rastafarianism? I no, I don't think you sent me that. Um, if you I'll, did, I'll, I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't remember. What I'll send you this one video because this one video I feel like is one of the best videos I've seen, where he basically breaks down Christianity historically and scientifically, and the things that were being said, it's like, it just makes sense. Like there were all of these other religions before Christianity mm-hmm. where there was a savior figure and you needed to believe in the savior to be saved and mm-hmm. the, they would descend into hell and then like be born again and raised from the dead. And these were other religions that exist that predated Christianity. Mm-hmm. And when you think about it, none of that was in the old Testament, but then all of a sudden there's this new Testament that oh, those books were apparently written also like 40 years after Jesus died. Right. And people weren't even literate back then. So it was like an oral tradition. You start putting all these things together and you're like, wait a minute. So if you asked me to write about somebody 40 years ago. Mm-hmm. Based on historical oral tradition, right? Yeah. Like... How bizarre is that? Like, or let's uh, let's just say twenty years ago, or thirty years ago. Let's say uh, five years ago. Jeez, I know. Like, if I were to, you know, be quoting people something you said uh, in the cafeteria uh, back in tenth grade, you know, how accurate do you think that's going to be? Yeah, I mean, Uh, like I said, there's some things in my memory that are super vivid. Like that whole baptism experience is vivid, and like if I knew if. If I walked with the Christ, right, I think I would remember a lot. But at the same time, I think I would forget a lot, too. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. yeah. But, but so, there's going to be a lot lost in translation, which is ridiculous why people hang on every word of the Bible like it's the divine word of God. Well, I mean, I used to I used to have, have this thought, you know, and I, I actually posed it to the past, but I don't remember the answer at this point. But like, like the thought was, you know, the, the Bible is written by man. Man is fallible. Right. Can the Bible be fallible? You know, right. and, and, you know, the, I guess the answer That's, was it, it was breathed by God, you know, and so. But who was, says who? How, what does that even mean? It was breathed by God. What does that even mean? It's, yeah. The, I, where where is that, like, where is that I'm coming to from? that out too. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Where is that notion coming from? It's coming from, guess where? The scripture, which was written by men. Right. So I'm like, okay, so if I create my own religion and I write here in this book, like the, uh, the Book of Confucianity. Uh-huh. Um, and on page 57, it says right here, this book is breathed by God. Mm-hmm. And then if somebody questions me about anything in the book, I say, well, you know, this is the divine word of God. And they're right. like, bullshit. And I'm like, no, no, no. It says it right here on page 57. Right. Yeah. Tell me how that's yeah, the Bible I, I, is anything I, differently than that. Yeah. 
yeah, I, I get, I get the logic behind that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it, it, it's, it's, it's tough, dude. It's tough. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I just I can't I well I can't I can't say like I said I don't have all the answers I wish I did dude and I wish I I could be like you know I give you give you one one sentence on whatever and and it all makes sense but I can't do that like you know I I can't I don't think there's anyone out there that can do that and then there might be but at the same time you're like hmm okay. You know, no, I don't. You would have your doubts after that. No, nah, like here's the thing. I don't. I don't think you realize this about me, and I don't think many. I don't even think anybody of my audience in Kavuziani already, but a lot of people don't even know this about me. But I actually really want there to be a God. Yeah. Like I, 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 I really, I am still seeking in a way. Right. I, I feel that from I, you. That's, I wish, that's the thing. I wish God were true. I wish there were a heaven. I wish there were an afterlife, right. a happy ending. Uh, right. I, I would like to go on living forever. Mm-hmm. Um. But the more and more and more and more I hope and seek it and pray and I mean I already did that for thirty years solidly, and I'm like, shit, life is short. My half of my life's gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, I need to live it up and enjoy my life and you know do what I want to do in this world because God is really not real to me, no matter how much. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is also why I'm like I don't really fear the afterlife. In, ter- in terms of a judgment day in hell, because you know me, I'm a very honest person, you know, right. I'm, I'm like, this is who I am. This is where I'm at. I, I'm not, hol- I'm not holding anything up my sleeve or hiding anything. I'm not deceiving people. I'm just very forthcoming. I have nothing to hide. So on judgment day, you know, if I'm standing before God, I'll just be like, God, here I am. You know, you, mm-hmm. you, you heard me crying out to you for years and years and years of my life. And you didn't manifest. You didn't. You right. Did, but was, what if what if he says I I I I reached out to you here. You denied it. I reached out to you there. You no. You, but he didn't. You, he didn't. You did. And other Christians did. But then we can go back to the whole thing about why you guys believe what you do and you want to convert people and you know you you don't want your friends to go to hell whatever. But that's that's a far cry from like look I'm not looking for some representative. Because right. there are a million people, religious people all over the world, claiming different religions, who they're all claiming right. to be the representative of God. Mm-hmm. Like, I can't go around believing, well, the Muslim guy who comments in a video and says, you know, Islam is the one true religion. You need to believe what I'm going to say. And then you come along, my friend, and you say, well, Jesus is this. And then another person says, I'm like, this is what I'm talking about, God, as I'm standing there on Judgment Day. I'm like, if, if you really think that I was supposed to believe person A over person B, C, D, E, F, all the way to Z, and a million times that. Or per, I was supposed to believe person, not, let's not even say person A. I was supposed to believe person uh, V, because person, person V... 386, had, yeah, yeah. you know? They had the right religion. Uh, thanks. Okay, God. So if you're going to condemn me to hell because I didn't believe in person V, and I, I heard A through K, and... It seemed fake to me, so I'm kind of like, okay, I'm out. But, but the mm-hmm. whole time I'm crying out to God, please, God, reveal yourself to me. Like, let person V, like, let, let it be a reality in my life so I know. Like, I've, I, I have such peace in my mind and my heart that I've genuinely tried, and I'm still continually open to that. But I can't just go by hearsay and what people, people say because everybody, this is what I'm saying. Like, I need God himself. God has to be a reality in my life. It can't just be you or a random internet person saying they had a dream, you know, right. they, they had a duck and like, you know, this thing happened to them and they interpreted it as God or somebody saw the light when they got into a coma. Like that's not going to cut it for me. You know, right. and, well, and if I'm mean, standing and, before and, God and he says, well, here's the thing, like there's, there's no surrender in that, right? There's no faith in that. And that's the, that's the big, the big yeah, but okay, thing. but you that idea, no that idea of faith, I find offensive because this is the, this is the same thing. I would stand in front of God on Judgment Day and be like, "You're going to condemn me to hell because I didn't have this thing called faith." If that's mm-hmm. your criteria for making people burn in hell for eternity, I think that's pretty fucked up. But if that's how you operate, fine, send me to hell. I'll burn in hell for eternity with everybody else because we didn't believe in something like. Think about it rationally. Without, without proof. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Why would God give us eyes? And like he gives us sight and sound and 
touch, like these five senses, right? Taste, mm-hmm. smell, all these things. And faith, the one thing that he judges us on will send us to hell for eternity, is not based on any of these physical senses that he gave us. Mm-hmm. That, again, it just is completely irrational and completely unfair and unjust. You know, you can't see God, you can't hear God, you can't taste God, you can't touch God, you can't smell God. I'm just supposed to believe that he's a that he's a he and not a she, or whatever the case that this particular book was assembled and written thousands of years ago by this one religion, and not believe the the Muslims about their thing. Mm-hmm. And I have I can't see touch God. I'm like, why did you even bother giving me senses if I can't experience it, you with my senses? Uh, but I'm going to be judged because I didn't believe again in like religion version v or of religion version k like i i just find that completely ridiculous you know if that's how god but how, operates but how different is a from v or c or x or 38 or 29? they're very different there's like five thousand different religions and all these different gods throughout human history mm-hmm. and, and all of them guess what all of them are claiming to be the one true religion mm-hmm. <laughs> so you know, when, when the Muslims come along and call you an infidel and you're going to burn in hell for eternity and you say, well, I'm a Christian and I know I'm going to heaven and you all are going to burn in eternity. This has been going on for ages. Uh-huh. And I'm like, all of this is more proof that religion is man-made to me. But no, I, I get you, dude. You know what I mean? I, I understand. Like, there's logic behind the argument, right? Mm-hmm. And and the whole thing is, is is the being able to to just say, hey, you have to take this. You have to take something. You have to take out. You have to take a leap of faith in something that you truly believe in. Like, you do it with your your art, your freelance graphic design, like opening up your own business in that regard is a leap of faith. You know, I, it is, but it isn't, it's a very well calculated, you know, this, this is my, this is my skill set. This is the marketplace. This is the value. This is my education. This is what I enjoy. It's a factor of all of those things. Sure. It's not a complete leap of faith. No, it's not complete, but at the same time, it's not easy. It's not an easy thing to do, you know, to, 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 not not be Joe Schmo who does a nine to five job. It's not, you know, because it's it's gonna it's gonna come up with its battles and you're gonna fight it. You know, I'm trying I'm trying to come up with an analogy here, but I don't know. It's just you you not you not you specifically, yeah, but like you you know what I mean. Like it to me, there there comes a point where things go beyond understanding and. You know, because we don't ultimately know well, why we're here. You know, yeah, and, that's why I I have a hope that maybe there is some God, and that some loving God. I think I said that in I don't know if you heard the uh, trailer, the podcast trailer, but I think that's where I talked about it. Where I was like, you know, I it's, it's serious. I, yeah, I, I got you. I I would like to think there's a God out there that loves us and cares, and that we can die and be with divine creator and and I, i'd like to think i could see my mom after i die and our dogs and all of that sounds lovely i can believe but your dog's there just so you know <laughs> yeah i mean i it's a nice idea to believe in right so it's kind of like okay maybe i'll just entertain that notion like there's a happy ending for the rest of my mm-hmm. life sure if it makes me feel better about my day-to-day living Sure, why mm-hmm. not? Right. There's no proof for it. There's no proof against it. So why not just choose to focus on a positive outcome? That's right. F- but that's I, fine. I, I just feel like like a, a lot of your your I guess conclusions have come because of other other people. That's the whole thing that's bu- I guess bugging me. Well, it's not I, just I other people though. It's life experience. All right. Other people, of course, are going to be a huge part of any person's life experience. You know? All right. Like, how, how, yeah. can, how can you... I mean, you, you know, it's got to make sense to you, just as an outsider, when you look at my life. When you look at... I, like, you know, the whole introversion 
projects. Yeah. Right. I I went back and looked at some of those entries like a couple of years ago. I looked went back and looked and I was like every one of those entries I remember, wow, I was so miserable then. It oh, was dude, they they were they were yeah, it was doom and gloom, but I loved them. I, I thought they were I mean, from a creative well, standpoint, the, they were yeah. put together well. Right. You know, from a creative but. standpoint, yes. And I think another reason why it was successful and why it was a good project was it was very raw. It was very honest. It was very real. So the same thing I'm doing with this podcast and the same thing I want to do with the other projects I'm doing, it's very raw. It's very real. It's very honest, mm-hmm. um, which is refreshing, I feel like, in the world we live in now because everybody is just like echo chamber just echoing the same ideas and not really thinking very deeply about their own you mm-hmm. know lives or their own shortcomings or their own struggles and people don't air those things publicly or whatever um right or if they do they do it in a way where they're like a victim you know and right. there's all this right. kind of shit but anyway uh but the point is when i went back and looked at how i was back then in my 20s Dude, I was so miserable. I was so sad. I was so like you could you could just read it and feel it and see it throughout the text that I'm writing. Like I would be like, God, I'm so sad. I really wish I could, you know, find somebody and love and I really wish I had a community. I really wish blah blah blah. Sometimes I would quote a scripture verse mm-hmm. and be like, you know, wrap it up with a psalm. You know, though I am miserable and destitute now, the Lord is with me and blah blah blah. I would do that kind of thing all the time. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I was honest the whole way, and I was honest at 30 when I was miserable and down and out, and I'm still honest today. But the difference mm-hmm. is that whole religion, seeking God thing in Christianity was not working for me at all. I was miserable. It was documented over a span of several years, mm-hmm. each entry by entry, this feeling of incompleteness, of you know, dissatisfaction of longing, of loneliness, of rejection, of sadness, of all of that. You know, like I told my mom the other day, I was like, mom, you remember all those calls we used to have, the phone calls where I would call and just talk about how sad I was or how lonely I was or like really wanting to be with somebody and just feeling rejected or I'm different or I'm whatever um, Mm -hmm. because I'm still single, but really want to get married and have kids and all that. And my mom was like, yeah. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Remember, we used to talk like that all the time throughout my 20s. Mm-hmm. And maybe even my, my early 30s when I kind of woke up to this stuff. And then I asked my mom, I was like, when is the last time we had conversations like that that you remember in the last five years? Or how often does that happen now? And she's like, yeah, I guess not, not anymore. Mm-hmm. There is such a clear difference between who I was and my lifestyle and my mindset and my happiness level back then in my 20s versus now, you know? So what I'm describing is very much a reality. For you. you. For me. This is my reality. Mm -hmm. So the same way I say, hey, if religion's working for you and you got your wife and kids and you go to church and everything's hunky-dory and it's all going according to plan and whatever, I'm not saying you, I'm just saying people. Um, yeah, I got you. If, it, if it's working, go with it. Because I have something that's working for me. Right. And I'm going with it. At the same time, I'm not 100% attached to this. because Right, I know. You're open. That's the yeah, whole thing. Like, yeah. like if, if, some, if, I, if I get new information. Right. presents itself and you're like, oh, wow, totally. Yeah. Now I see. Yeah. Like if, if God actually comes to you. Yeah. I, I, I pray he does, dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, and he just says... Jay, what are you doing? You know? And you're going to be like, what do you mean? (laughs) He's going to be like, what are you doing? You know? Right. And you're like, well, you didn't give me any proof, man. What do you want me to do? (laughs) Say it. Right. But thanks for showing up now and and showing me that you exist. And I'd be like, yeah. Yeah. All right. Word up. Watch that. Watch that movie, dude. I think you might. I think you might like it. I think I'm going to be very annoyed by it. You could be. I'm already annoyed this... by the description of it. Yeah. No, well, the whole thing here is like, oh, I don't want to ruin it. Um, you can ruin it. <laughs> no, I, I'm not going to. Because I'm not like, going to uh, watch it. I want you to watch like, it. Like, I'll watch, I'll watch the uh, c- conversation with God thing. That's what I mean. That's oh, what ne- I'm talking about. Oh, I thought you were talking about the case for Christ. 
No, no. If you, I mean that one, if you don't want to, I don't really care. No, no, no. Like, I, I'm maybe... gonna watch. I'm gonna watch the conversation with God thing on Netflix. Yeah, interview, interview. Yeah, yeah interview with God. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I actually find. Don't it, spoil you know, that. No, but he's also a reporter. Just so you know. Yeah. All right. Um, but yeah, so it's 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 interesting, you know. Yeah. Because we all we all would wish that that would happen. You know what I mean? Like you could just talk with God and. And he would be there yeah. in front of you as right. a physical person, like a kind of like a real conversation, it, yeah, like an actual I, an actual relationship. Yeah, and yeah. it it's it's the a video two way street. Yeah, yeah, the cinema cine, cinematography. It's not like over the top crazy, you know what I mean. But at the same time, there's like when they're actually sitting down talking. It, I, I I enjoyed it, dude. I, I thought it was a good movie. But you know, there's probably the uh, extreme legalistic Christian like that movie's garbage and blah, 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 you know, and all kinds of stuff like that. But Oh, was it made by Christians? Oh, I don't know. Like, there's an actor in there that's that I've seen before, and he's not a... He he might be Christian, but I didn't think, like... He's like a regular secular actor, so... Um, uh, you've seen him before. Like, mm-hmm. he always plays, like, the doctor type or something like that. Yeah. Um, but, no, I mean, like, just check it out. Yeah, I don't want to like, uh, try to try no, no, to upsell no. it so much that you're like, yeah, I'm, no, 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 no. I tried dude, it too hard. To it was already in my queue before you even yeah. told me about it, so I, I will definitely check it out, and then uh, yeah. maybe we'll we'll do a follow up, uh, right on later next time. So let me know when you're going to watch it, so then I can rewatch it. So okay, that, you know it's fresh in my mind. Okay, cool. cool. Uh, do you have any final thoughts? Uh, not really. Um. It's good talking to you, buddy. Yeah, man. This is cool. Yeah, see ya. All right, later. You know, since leaving the church, I don't really have many Christian friends anymore. For obvious reasons, I suppose. But I'm glad for the few that I've still retained. I mean, a good friendship is a good friendship. When people appreciate each other's company and shared history and perspectives, it's a nice thing, even if those perspectives are vastly different. And I think the thing about Ryan and me is that despite our divergent belief systems, we both come to the table respecting each other, each voicing our own views, perhaps hoping to convince the other of the truth. But even if we can't, it's okay. Yes, I will periodically mock his religion and he will periodically warn me of my imminent demise in hell, but it's fine because we both ultimately care for each other and we're both honest with each other the whole time. I think it's a huge problem in our polarized society these days when people allow their religious, political, or whatever other differences to drive them apart and into echo chambers where they only hear from sources who shout back at them everything they already believe. One thing I've always believed in, even back when I was a Christian, and definitely now, is diversity. Not just racial, ethnic, whatever, but diversity of thought. I'm intrigued by people who see the world much differently than I do. I seek to understand why people think and act as they do. And in so doing, I often find myself not really hating people, or even hating the way they think, because in all honesty, they have their reasons, just like I have my reasons. We all have our reasons for believing what we do and making the lifestyle choices that we do. Hey, in a free society, to each their own. Anyway. Hopefully by now you're already subscribed to the Confusianity podcast on your platform of choice so you can get notified as soon as future episodes get published. Also, if you've been enjoying listening, please leave a nice rating and a glowing review on Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you have family and friends who would be interested in the sorts of things we've been talking about these last few weeks, send them a link to the podcast. And last but not least, we're approaching 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. So please help us get there sooner rather than later. The URL is just youtube.com slash confusianity. Not only can you access all podcast episodes there, but check out the Thinking Out Loud series as well. New episodes every Sunday. Some good food for thought there. Think of it as a one minute replacement for Sunday morning church. That's all for now. Until next time, my friends.